Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Barrior Hargeli Gorsan Kedner. I hope you hear me well. Hmm? I hope so. Welcome to the second day of Erasmus Plus information webinars. You all know that a couple of weeks ago, a new phase of Erasmus Plus 2021-2027 was announced. And we already have open calls. Yesterday, the first day of our information days was devoted to Erasmus Mundus actions. We talked yesterday about Erasmus Mundus joint masters and Erasmus Mundus new, newly developed proposal, desired measures. Uh, we had a presentation from the executive agency about uh, how to apply the format of uh, these uh, actions, but we are still waiting for the application forms. Today is devoted to Jean Monnet actions. And I greet on behalf of National Erasmus Plus offices. My name is Lana Karlova, and together with my colleagues Edith Romonian and Anito Rosian, we greet you and we hope that we will not have technical problems. Uh, in total, we are more than 80. It's very good. We hope that today um, meeting, today discussion, today presentations will be of your help to understand Jean Monnet actions and um, to apply, to apply because we have around two months to the deadlines. But first of all, I want to you to remind, please, your, please keep your mics muted and you see the interpretation section uh, below of the screen. You can tune to Armenian or English interpretation. I hope that everything is, is going well and you can listen uh, uh, smoothly. Uh, you will see only panelists, our guest speakers. Attendees uh, are in other section, but we all could ask questions, of course. And please uh, raise your hands when you have your questions or you have some comments uh, to share or something. So um, now this is the time for the welcome speech and my big pleasure to invite uh, to have a welcome speech to Mr. Tigran Sandelan, head of European Department of the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs of Republic of Armenia. Please, Mr. Sandelian. Good afternoon, colleagues. Could you hear me? Good. Yes. I'm delighted to take the part on this online webinar aimed at raising awareness on the startup competition, the conditions of participation, the grants opportunities, as well as opportunities for cooperation with local, regional, and international partners envisaged by the Jean Monnet activities of the Erasmus Plus program. On 1st March 2011, Armenia-European Union Comprehensive and Enhanced Partnership Agreement, SEPA, entered into the force. It has now been ratified by the Republic of Armenia, all EU member states, and the European Parliament. And you are probably aware of that the agreement was signed back in November 2017, and substantial part have been pro provisionally applied since June 1st, 2018. Since then, the bilateral cooperation between the Armenia and the European Union has advanced progressively. SEPA provides a framework for the EU and Armenia to work together in a wide range of areas, spanning from the strengthening democracy, the rule of law and human rights, creating more jobs and business opportunities, improving legislation, public safety, greener and cleaner environment, better education and opportunities for research. It's also played a major role for modernization of Armenia, in particular, the supporting mobility for young people 
as means of promoting intercultural dialogue and the acquisition of knowledge, skills, and competencies outside the formal educational system. The collaboration in the field of education and training in the intensifying cooperation and policy dialogue with the view of approximation, the, uh, approximating the education and training system in the Republic of Armenia with policies and practices of the European Union. If an utmost, utmost significance for both parties, particularly the CEPA stipulates the promotion of lifelong learning as well as the cooperation and transparency at all levels of education and training with a special focus on vocational and higher education. Moreover, it's envisaged the transformation of education and training system, as well as enhancement of the cooperation to further develop vocational, educational and training while taking into consideration the group practices very well established in the European Union. In this context, I would like to stress the importance of the Erasmus Plus program. For 30 years, Europe has founded the Erasmus program, which has enabled over 3 million students to spend, uh, to spend part of their students, uh, stu studies in another higher education institution in Europe, thus providing opportunities for students, as well as for teaching staff uh, of higher education institution to undertake a learning and professional experience. The Erasmus Plus aims to support the actions in the field of education, training, youth and sport. Moreover, it's open to its partner countries. And as we know, Armenia is a part of Eastern Partnership countries and can take part in certain action of the program subject to specific criteria or conditions. Within the framework of the Erasmus Plus program, Armenia, Armenian universities will be able to increase their internalized internationalization capacities, modernize educational programs and teaching practices, as well as develop new joint master's programs based on international experience. Taking into account all the key actions, such as international credit mobility, Erasmus Mundus, joint master degrees, capacity building in higher education, teams of higher education reform experts, etc., of the Erasmus Plus program, John Mon is the one of particular value, especially for promotion of excellence in teaching and research in the field of the European Union studies. In addition, it also serves as an alternative tool <clears throat> to reinforce the understanding and knowledge of the European integration process, as well as the academic dialogue on the EU Eastern Partnership relations. Given that John Monet activities can help to strengthen the international academic cooperation, increase the participation in cooperation programs of the European Union, as well as to improve the students and teacher mobility, it may play a critical role in advancing people-to-people -people context and in promoting convergence and coordinated reforms in higher education in line with the European Union agenda for higher education. In conclusion, dear colleagues, I would like to thank the National Erasmus Plus Office in Armenia, and Education, Audiovisual and Cultural Executive Agency for organization of such an informative event and the invitation extended to the Minister of Foreign Affairs to take part in that. We at the Minister of Foreign Affairs highly appreciate the activities of the National Office and in particular those aimed at raising awareness on the Erasmus Plus international higher education sector among the Armenian society, especially its its uh, younger members. Uh, I thank you for your attention and wish you a very productive discussion today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Samelian. I appreciate it. Uh, it's an enormous uh, support which is given from the European Union, from the European Commission to our countries uh, in the field of education, uh, uh, youth, providing this financial assistance and technical assistance for improving, for developing our education and youth activities. And thank you for mentioning SEPA. This is absolutely uh, important document we have as a cooperation with the European Union. And hopefully we will follow the all recommendations and all that cooperation 
um, spheres, which already mentioned, and especially in education. Education, it should be our power. And we really want to um, have better education. Uh, we try together. Of course, we try together. Thank you very much. I want to greet our guest speakers today. Ekaterina Kardava from Georgia. Hello. Hello. Uh, Oksana Halovka Havrishova from Ukraine. Good afternoon. Um, Janar Medumbaeva from Kazakhstan. Uh, our colleagues, our experts. Hello. <laughs> Anna Khvarastyankina, Kristina Gevorkian. Uh, our uh, speaker, uh, Irina Kurdadze, she will um, join us a little bit later. So, just to understand our audience, to understand uh, uh, what, uh, we, what, what wishes uh, our people have, what is perspectives, let's do a very simple poll just right now. It will take very, very quick. And then we will start the series of our introductions and uh, presentations. Please follow the, uh, the questions and we will see how many of you already have your experience and really want to apply to Jean Monnet um, and for which action, if you already know about. Can we see the results now? Only 47 of 85 participants have managed to reply to the questions. Maybe we will wait a few seconds more. Okay. I think we can see the picture already. Okay, first question about the experience already have. Uh, we have 66 percent, it's already, uh, they, they don't have the experience, uh, 34 it's already have, okay, audience which uh, have no experience, it's obvious, planning to apply for Jean Monnet action, yes, 87 percent, good, and which action, module 82, chair 16, and Center of Excellence, 18. Not bad. <laughs> good start, good start. Okay, let me start with um, presentation as an introduction um, of uh, Jean Monnet. You um, should know that uh, uh, Jean Monnet action um, can contribute to spread knowledge about EU, European Union integration matters and um, activities aim at promoting excellence in teaching and research in the field of European Union or European integration studies worldwide. Uh, this is very popular 
program under the Erasmus uh, Plus, and all all the world they apply to uh, have some financing for introducing modules or establishing chair uh, or do other activities. Just as introduction, the Jean Monnet uh, actions, we have uh, several strengths. We will talk today about teaching and research activities. We talk about module, chairs, and center of excellence, because the call for all these three uh, activities are open. As to policy debate with the academic world that creating networks and doing projects, then we wait for the for the information still. And there is another uh, activities support to association, as well support to association. General statistics uh, since 2016 un until last year, you see that last year was very, very rich with uh, uh, projects. Uh, it was in total from all over the world. The beneficiaries were 2014 uh, who established models, chair centers and uh, chairs and centers of excellence. More than 100 networks and projects and nine projects as support to association. Very, very general. Um, some um, picture uh, from Armenia. Since 2013, uh, we had in total nine projects, five modules, two projects, and two networks. Not so many as Georgia, Ukraine, Moldova have uh, we're trying our, our best just to have more, and we hope that the number will be will will grow. Uh, hopefully, for this call. In total, you see since 2016, and before we had migration policy challenges in the EU and the South Caucasus, and it was implemented at the Yerevan State University. Another model, European integration and EU values, human rights, democracy, and the rule of law at Yerevan Brusev uh, University. Now it's a Brusev State University. Uh, it was over that, that project. Two projects were over, even three. And uh, now they are going to projects at Armenian State University of Economics and Brusev State University. Laboratory of Approximation of Armenian Legislation of the EU Acquis. And um, Anna Hvarastjankina, as a coordinator of the project, will uh, talk a little bit about the project today and uh, absolutely share her uh, experience with you. And EU politics, policies, and polity. What about projects? Um, the name are rather complicated the title of the project, comparing Eastern partnership country strategies and solution in the area of approximation of domestic legal systems to the EU acquis, comparing approximation strategies and solutions. Uh, again, Bruce of State University uh, coordinator Anna Hvarastjankina, and uh, it will be continued at the second uh, project uh, until 2023, the second one, promotion of the European studies in Armenia. And here is the consortium of Armenian institutions, uh, Armenian State Pedagogical University, Gladzo University, which is a uh, um, private institution, Public Administration Academy, and Banadzor State University. Networks project, two projects. Um, the first project uh, which um, I was involved, uh, Center for European Studies at Yerevan State University, and it was the network developing European studies in the Caucasus, DESNET. And um, our colleague, uh, Christina Gevorkian, um, she will also probably say some words about the project during the presentation, um, which already was very, very interesting networks with uh, many participants and many, many activities. 
in the last project uh, of networking, EU and uh, EAEU, between conflict and competition, coverages and cooperation. Um, State University of Economics uh, was involved into the project. Uh, this is the general picture of uh, projects which already, um, you know, accepted and implemented in Armenia and those which are going. And uh, the number of ongoing projects are more than uh, those which are already finished. And now the call of, of this year, um, about the module, establishing chair and centers of excellence. And we have around two months um, in front of us. And we hope that we will try to, uh, to write the new proposal or renovate, upgrade, redesign the last proposals, which were not successful. Um, and our colleagues today, our guest speakers, and uh, after we will try to support you and uh, our today meeting, it will be of course not enough and we will try to have another online or probably face-to-face -face meeting with uh, potential applicants uh, to see your proposals and to uh, give you recommendations. So, uh, this is very, very short introduction, and if you would have any questions, our office um, welcome you to uh, writing us and to call us. We will be very, very glad to connect you to uh, people who could uh, provide you technical assistance or academic assistance somehow. So please don't hesitate. We have Facebook age, very, very active, um, YouTube channel and, and the YouTube channel as, as well as on the website and the, and the Facebook page, our um, recording of today and tomorrow uh, days uh, will be put and you could uh, go through again. So we also have Twitter channel. So any mails. So, Welcome, welcome to our office, and uh, uh, we can provide, if we could, any assistance. This is from my side, and now uh, my pleasure to give the, the word to Yekaterina Kardava. Uh, she's a coordinator of the module and she uh, is working at two universities, at Caucasus University uh, and Gori State Teaching University. Please, Ekaterina. Thank you very much. Yours. Thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. It's my great pleasure to be here today with you. Um, thank you, Armenian uh, Erasmus Office, inviting me to share uh, with some experiences from Georgia uh, in the field of Jean Monnet activities. My name is Ega Gardava. I am Doctor of Law and I represent two universities. One is the Caucasus University, uh, which is um, uh, situated in Tbilisi and it has the branch in Batumi as well, in Ajara region. And the second university is the Gori State Teaching University. It's a regional university uh, in Shidakartli of Georgia, and it is in few kilometers from the occupational line uh, of Tsinwali uh, region. Uh, I have a um, very modest experience uh, in uh, Jean Monnet activities, only three experiences. Um, uh, 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 three experiences. Mostly, mostly I am involved. Uh, was involved in uh, formulating the project ideas, uh, project goals, objectives, and of course later uh, uh, the application forms were done in groups within the university. Uh, the application form always uh, polishing and refining the project ideas, project goals, and it gives the uh, due form. 
form to the um, to the uh, uh, to the project. And of course, uh, the application uh, writing the application form is very tedious and very um, uh, timing uh, work, but uh, it's 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 very natural. Uh, what are these three? Uh, activities um, where I am involved currently. One is the uh, Jean Monnet project at the Caucasus University. The name is the legal face of the European Union. Uh, the project aims to research some fields of the European Union. Uh, it is based on association agreement. You know, Georgia has the association agreement with the European Union. So we have huge obligations for legal approximation Estimation. So uh, within the project, it is uh, uh, chosen five fields of uh, European Union law, and uh, this is the one of the goal, goal of the project. And another is uh, that to share um, the results and outcomes of uh, the research with uh, uh, other professional world uh, outside the university via different tools, trainings, uh, conferences, uh, uh, publications, and uh, etc. Um, and um, uh, the coordinator of, of this uh, project is uh, the professor of the university, Sofia Schengelia. Uh, the another one uh, from the activities of Jean Monnet is the module. Uh, you know that uh, the module is one professor uh, course. It is done uh, at the Gori University. The name of the project is the um, European Union Explored in Association Agreement. Uh, within the module, uh, the special curriculum or uh, teaching course is designed, European Union Association Agreement and Legal Approximation. And this uh, curriculum is offered to any educational programs within the Gori University. It does not matter law program, public administration program, um, uh, business administration program, etc. It is offered to any student in the uh, within uh, in the Gori uh, University just to broaden the knowledge about not only uh, uh, on European. Union, but on association agreement and association processes in Georgia. Uh, you know that um, uh, in Georgia currently every single body in public sector and in private sector works uh, closely uh, uh, with standards and obligations issued uh, from association uh, agreement. So we need uh, professionals knowing uh, European Union, knowing uh, association agreement and uh, association processes in Georgia. And um, uh, here uh, I am myself the coordinator of, of this module uh, because I am the author of the teaching uh, course. And uh, the third one is the again Jean Monnet project at the Caucasus uh, University. The name is the Triangle Effect of the European Studies uh, uh, at Schools. Um, it is very interesting uh, program as it aims to speak and to uh, explain and to do seminars with school pupils. Um, uh, and uh, it creates and establishes uh, the uh, good space for informational spread uh, and dis dissemination because when we speak with pupils, there are always are uh, their teachers and their parents as well. So it impacts not only pupils' future development, but on the family, uh, maybe opinions and att attitudes and teacher, teacher, uh, teachers' development as well. Uh, it is designed to do for um, ethnic minorities schools in the regions of uh, Georgia, and not only for ethnic minority schools, but for IDPs as well. You know IDPs, uh, it's an uh, internally displaced people. They are Georgians, and these are Georgians who are expelled from uh, Abkhazia due to the occupation uh, from uh, the Russian Federation side. And uh, the coordinator is the university professor, uh, Buranda Jelidze. Uh, 
uh, I would like to stress uh, some uh, some important parts uh, of the um, of projects and activities and uh, application forms, which on which uh, the future success depends in reality. Of course, uh, the idea of projects should be based on real needs of society, or or maybe on very very uh, uh, concrete professional uh, groups and targets, or maybe uh, needs of or needs of uh, universities. It it should be realistic, and when uh, the issue comes to European studies and the European uh, Union and the European Association processes, we are always lacking. We are short of knowledge and we are short of uh, special experience with this regard. So there are huge and uh, uh, many target groups uh, who, who should be involved uh, within these ideas. Um, uh, it is very important to design um, events and activities who will demonstrate the strong correlation uh, with uh, goals and objectives uh, of them. Uh, of uh, of uh, of projects, uh, it it should serve directly um, uh, the execution of goals and uh, objectives. Um, very complicated and very hard work is to um, to write the methodological part of the application form, because uh, here should be shown the system of method with regards to each event and each activities what are integrated into the application uh, application uh, forms um, as to personal um, it is very very important and it is halfway for the success of the uh, project uh, university should manifest that it has a professional academia permanent staff who has uh, the great experience in research and in practical uh, field um, related to um, EU law or uh, European Union policy or uh, association agreement on European integration or European Union, just not only teaching and practical experiences, but research experiences. It, it, it is very important. And this personnel should be the um, permanent staff of the university. Of course, uh, within the Jean Monnet activities, uh, um, there should be strong connection with other uh, experts and professionals from other universities, organizations, other countries, but uh, the general uh, and main staff should be uh, from my view, of course, uh, the permanent staff of the uh, university. Uh, the university experience uh, in governing the international uh, project is very important. University should uh, demonstrate as well that it has uh, those particular structures who serve the good uh, implementation of the project because only project staff can do nothing without university structures. Uh, I mean, international relations, uh, maybe a department, financial department, peer department, IT department, any other department, what is very relevant for the execution of the project ideas, uh, activities, events, and uh, etc. Uh, of course, dissemination tools should be written down in details what kind of dissemination tools will have the project, maybe a creation of web pages in so social pages, uh, maybe TV uh, tools, maybe newspapers and any other. Um, as much as po possible, uh, this should be written in detail in application uh, form. And of course, uh, the budget, uh, which uh, should be very precise. And um, I would say directly should be connected to uh, events and activities again, what we have uh, in uh, application, application uh, form. Um, uh, 
yes, of course, when we speak Jean Monnet activities, always uh, there could be um, combined three main components within the uh, projects. It's a uh, resort teaching and informational uh, policy. Of course, when uh, the issue comes to the European studies, uh, Jean Monnet activities can be uh, mostly, um, mostly operating on teaching uh, teaching uh, uh, policy, but I think personally that when uh, the um, university submits um, uh, um, uh, the Jean Monnet activities, because uh, other organization, organizations also, also can submit uh, uh, the Jean Monnet activities, but when university submit, I think that university should uh, show the solid capacity of uh, research activities and then to find something new to find something important and then uh, integrate all these research activities into the into the teaching uh, teaching instruments and of course um, uh, the informational policy which combines uh, the both uh, research and teaching uh, teaching directions of the project uh, finally, what could be the outcomes of the implementation of the projects? Um, of course, uh, developed developed academia within the university, because this academia may uh, conduct the research, uh, designs new curriculum, so they are more, uh, more uh, experienced, more, they have more knowledge about the European Union and European integration processes, and uh, they, they, um, uh, they integrate this knowledge in their curriculums within the university. So students uh, take the more knowledge. So they they became to be more competitive on labor market. It, it is the kind of um, uh, one of the ou outcomes and uh, special result uh, uh, issuing from the Jean Monnet activities and implementation of the projects. Uh, the second result uh, should be the developed and uh, um, understanding about European uh, Union. Um, uh, uh, awareness rising uh, about European Union, about association agreement, integration policy. And this should be uh, as internal as well external policy of the universities, because university always uh, should uh, should share um, its uh, achievements to other professional words and I think it is not a result for only the university but all others as well um, and uh, of course uh, we should have the materials materials informational materials on research materials on created the format of dialogue uh, publications articles books uh, um, uh, special dialogue formats, etc. What could be we what what could be um, used again, um, again in in um, in further research and teaching of uh, European European uh, studies. Uh, as to target groups, there could be um, many target groups, of course, uh, broad society, but very specific, uh, concrete professional uh, society, for example, journalists, uh, economists, um, uh, business, rep business representatives, employers, employees, and any, any very, very concrete tar uh, target groups, uh, of course, politicians and decision makers. Uh, making um, uh, society as well public services. Uh, currently, I think how to reach political parties and different uh, religion organizations via the Jean Monnet activities, because uh, we are uh, seriously lacking uh, the knowledge and information uh, within these target groups in Georgia, um, not only uh, on European Union, even about what currently Georgia does with, uh, within the framework of the association agreement or, or what 
what laws are uh, adopted, what what uh, uh, things are executed about about Georgian case. They are lacking information about Georgian lacking, not only uh, generally about European uh, Union. And I think this uh, this uh, could be target groups within the Jean Monnet activities as well. I'm trying to, to elaborate uh, some ideas with regard to this. And of course, other uh, target groups uh, as well, uh, students, academia, schools, regions, IDPs, ethnic minorities, and the difference where we, where we should dissemin disseminate uh, the information about uh, and popularize uh, the Europeanization and democratization processes in uh, Georgia. Okay, this was my very brief, um, a brief presentation about my very modest experience, and I'm glad if it will be useful for, for you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ekaterina, for the presentation and for your experience. It's a very interesting. Um, we all know that without team within the university, it will be very difficult to be successful. So uh, thank you for, for stressing that. And uh, it's good that you already um, have this possibility to work together with your colleagues from different uh, uh, from different uh, divisions and centers and also to uh, give possibility to your project to be announced and to be spread out, uh, out uh, from the institution. Thank you. And this is the time for questions. Please, do we have questions? You can raise your hands or you can write in the chat se section. No hands raised. Maybe there would be later any questions. I will be here, so I will ask uh, to any questions. So I'm with yeah, you. Yeah. Please, Thank not you. to be modest, dear audience. <laughs> be brave. Ask questions. Each question is very, very important. You start and then another people will uh, have a line with the questions or with, you know, uh, with some recommendations, whatever. So, well, then uh, it will be a, uh, second, the third, third presentation. Uh, we uh, think that it will be combination of the sharing information and giving you recommendations, uh, some practical recommendation, um, and how to prepare a successful uh, Jean Monnet proposal. And with uh, this uh, presentation, uh, Anna Hvarastiankina from Brusov State University and Christina Gerokian from uh, Yerevan State University Center for European Studies. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Lana. Christina, would you mind if I share? No, no, please. Okay, so, okay, so I, I start sharing the presentation. Okay, so hopefully it's here. Okay. Um, so in our presentation, uh, as Lana mentioned, we are going to present uh, our experience uh, of uh, introducing Jean Monnet activities at our universities, but at the same time also to share some uh, practical recommendations. Uh, I just would like to mention that uh, um, this information is uh, only in the format of recommendation and it's very subjective for individual experience. So in no way it is only one guideline to follow. This is just uh, two cases that we would like to share with you. And uh, um, let me please introduce myself. Um, I'm Anna Varastankina, uh, Associate Professor of Law at Brusov University and uh, uh, the head of the Center for Interdisciplinary Studies. Uh, currently, I'm coordinating two Jean Monnet activities, Jean Monnet module, uh, focusing on legal approximation and the Jean Monnet project with the same uh, 
uh, topic which supplements uh, some of the activities of the Jean Monnet um, module. Uh, Christine, uh, would you please present yourself? Yeah. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure. Uh, I believe uh, it's a pleasure meeting all of you. Uh, my, I'm Christine Geverkian. I'm representing the Center for European Studies. Our center has been involved in three Jean Monnet projects. I have participating as one of the lecturers uh, in two uh, Jean Monnet modules, and I was one of the sort of coordinators uh, in Jean Monnet network. Uh, we have some uh, experience in how to write the modules and how to uh, run uh, the um, Jean Monnet activities. So we would be very happy, and me personally, I'd be very happy to share some of my experience. Though in this presentation, I have only one module that has just finished, uh, which uh, that, uh, uh, that finished in 2019 and which is the most relevant for the Erasmus Plus uh, thing. But, uh, we, uh, I haven't included the network uh, part because uh, for now there is no network call uh, for our region uh, at, at this moment. But uh, if there will be any uh, questions and if there is any call for network, I'll be happy to also share my experience. But if you have questions, I will also uh, uh, answer them. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Christina. Uh, I just would like to mention that uh, the network um, just presented by Christina transformed into a very uh, successful association of European studies for the Caucasus, uh, a professional association. Um, serving as a platform of cooperation for scholars and practitioners working in various um, disciplinary fields uh, of uh, European studies and uh, uh, our colleagues uh, from both the South Caucasus region and beyond from Eastern Partnership countries uh, are warmly invited to join the association and participate in the activities organized by um, the association. Okay. Mm. I think, uh, first of all, um, we have to start with the discussion of uh, the concept of European studies, and uh, this will uh, explain what the possibilities we may have uh, from the perspective of integrating Jean Monnet activities into our um, programs, university programs and university curriculum. Um, there are several approaches how to define European studies. Uh, there is no single and stable definition of what European studies is as an academic field. Um, the classical or traditional approach uh, uh, focuses mainly on social sciences and uh, um, explores the processes of European integration and the uh, EU as a global actor from the perspective of political science, law, economics, and other social sciences. However, and this is clearly stated in the guidelines in the Erasmus Plus uh, program, uh, for the purposes of Jean Monnet activities, European studies uh, as a subject field is understood really uh, broadly. It is not limited to this classical traditional uh, disciplines, but um, addresses any aspects related to the functioning of the European Union, to the practices of the member states, to the relations uh, of, between the European Union and third countries, international organizations, and so on. So practically, um, the uh, project uh, which may be submitted as a Jean Monnet action may address any aspects uh, of uh, or any sectors of the European Union policies. This may be energy, agriculture, transport, um, consumer protection, education, um, culture, any sector of uh, policies in the European studies from the perspective of any discipline. Uh, also taking into consideration the experience of the member states. Uh, the project uh, may also address any sector of cooperation between EU and uh, a third country, um, or just the general framework of cooperation between EU and a specific country. Practically, um, the, here, um, the, the, the limits are very wide, and you can uh, think about any topic uh, which could be meaningfully discussed uh, from either comparative perspective or from European perspective, both at the EU level and at the level of the 
member states. Um, the goals of, of the Jean Monnet activities, uh, of course, uh, uh, should uh, address not only the interests uh, and the priorities of uh, a specific uh, higher education institution of your university, but also meet uh, the needs and the vision of the European Union. Uh, and uh, in the guidelines, uh, again, you can see how the defined, how they are presented, and uh, of course uh, it is important that uh, your project uh, uh, is in line, is harmonized with this general uh, goal. So for example here uh, you can read that uh, European studies should promote active European citizenship and values and deal with the role of the European Union in a globalized world. So obviously for the Jean Monnet activities which are implemented at uh, the EU uh, uh, countries, at the EU universities, uh, the first part of this phrase is the most relevant promoting European citizenship, but uh, what regards to the implementation of the European Union values and uh, also strengthening the role of the European Union as a global player uh, with the relations with third countries, this is where um, the Jean Monnet activities internationally can contribute and can uh, make a significant uh, input. Uh, and here uh, in the second paragraph uh, also you can read something which directly addresses uh, the universities in particular in um, uh, Eastern partnership countries, so again promotion of the EU values, enhancing the visibility of the European Union and uh, um, promotion of the public democracy or public diplomacy. Okay. Uh, Christina, would you like to make yeah. any? Yeah. And uh, if we speak about uh, Jean Monnet activities and if we speak about the call, the current call that has been announced, please uh, take into consideration that Jean Monnet teaching and research now has these very uh, specific four uh, features, I mean, like uh, objectives that need to fill, uh, that you need to address with your uh, application. Uh, it, it does promote, it, it does refer to the excellence in teaching and research in the field of European studies worldwide. I mean, uh, the projects can be applied, any university can apply for Jean Monnet teaching and research activity, any university around the world. And the idea is to promote teaching and research. Whenever we are writing a um, module or we are writing uh, or we are applying for a chair or we are applying for a uh, center for excellence, we should, uh, uh, we should take into consideration that both teaching and research should be part of your application. Another thing that is very important uh, that um, with your application, if before the, there was the idea that the, uh, that the any Jean Monnet activity should foster the dialogue between academic world and the society and the policy makers. Now with this call, this part is made uh, very, very um, stressed and it's very, it made uh, very uh, important. So uh, while you are writing your applications, you will also need to think about uh, activities uh, that will not only um, uh, aim at students who will benefit, but will, you will also think about activities like workshops, roundtables that will foster the dialogue with uh, of the academic world with the society, that you will have the special activities that will include also uh, or you will involve state uh, state body uh, people representatives from state bodies uh, in Covering uh, coming from local or state or state level, civil servants, civil society actor, representatives of different levels of education and the media. So this is very important. So either to have uh, study uh, visits, either to have. Um, uh, guest lectures that will or roundtable discussions or workshops that will also enhance the connection between the academic world and the uh, society or let's call policy makers. Another thing is to strengthen, I, it's uh, the idea is to strengthen, I mean, your um, uh, the, the role of EU and to show the generate knowledge and insights in support of the EU policy making and strengthen the role of the EU within Europe and in a globalized world, which means that in your application, you need somehow you need to address the role of EU and you need to highlight the importance in that specific field or, or 
when you're speaking about the policies or legislation of the European Union, it doesn't matter whether it is a legal aspect, political aspect, interdisciplinary aspect, uh, the, uh, your application needs to address it. And uh, the, th uh, the fourth one, uh, which is the very most important thing, I believe uh, when we are looking at the guidelines now is the dissemination, reach out to a wider public and spread knowledge about the EU to a wider society beyond academia and specialized audiences bringing the EU closer to the public. Um, with your applications, you need to think about dissemination strategy. With this current application, dissemination becomes one of the significant um, tools uh, it doesn't matter whether it is module, a chair, or center for excellence. You need to think about dissemination. You need to think about activities like, again, workshops or conferences, or even non-degree trainings that will involve, that will spread the information about the EU and about your project. Anna? Uh -huh. yeah, thank you very much, Christina. Um, Yes, I just would like to underline when you write uh, your application, it is very important to clearly state for each Jean Monnet activity, uh, the objectives are clearly defined in the guidelines. It is very important just to literally follow uh, and uh, uh, show the link between the objectives uh, and between the content of your project and these specific objectives. Uh, they, uh, also the uh, objectives uh, uh, are then um, repeated in the uh, electronic application form. That is not the description uh, of your project, but also in the uh, electronic application where you have to choose in between in the multiple choice questions, what are the objectives uh, that uh, are addressed specifically by your project. and. Um, it is very important also to clearly uh, indicate uh, and clearly uh, justify your project, why you need this project, how it addresses the needs and interests of your uh, university, uh, how it corresponds to your individual teaching and research plans, and what is also very important, and maybe this is on the uh, first uh, scale in the grade, um, how uh, it addresses and how it will contribute to the um, uh, implementation of the objectives of this project. So this should be really clearly uh, stated um, and mm -hmm. uh, with very specific focus and very precisely, uh, not going too broad in the description, but just clearly stating what objective you are uh, going to achieve and how your project will uh, contribute to the implementation of this uh, objective. So practically here in the next slide, uh, you, you can see that for all of the types of the Jean Monnet actions for modules, chairs, and center of centers of excellence, in addition to teaching, in addition to research, it is very important also to uh, be open and uh, provide some possibilities for building the dialogues between between the academic uh, community and policymakers, civil servants, civil society, and general public. So this is relevant uh, to all of the actions. And uh, in your application, alongside with the uh, syllabi, with the descriptions of your uh, teaching courses, you will also have to provide detailed description uh, of the planned activities. And these ac activities should be uh, uh, targeting the uh, groups indicated in the guidelines. Um, let us just now cover briefly uh, the basic three um, types of Jean Monnet actions. The first um, and probably the simplest one is uh, the Jean Monnet module. This is a teaching program uh, which uh, may consist of one course or several courses uh, um, interrelated between themselves. The minimum duration of a Jean Monnet module is 40 teaching hours, but of course there is no limit. It may be 
20, 80, or sorry, it's not 20, uh, more than 40, 50, or 100, 200, as much as you can uh, realistically afford taking into consideration the uh, resources and the capacities of your university, particularities of your uh, curricula, particularities of organization of teaching process at your university, and of course, uh, the human resources, uh, the team, uh, the module may be taught only by one professor. Uh, for example, mm -hmm. currently I'm coordinating the module where I'm the only um, uh, staff uh, member. Uh, so the module is taught only by myself and also by the invited, well-established scholars, guest speakers. But uh, before this module at Brusov University, we had a very successful project, uh, Jean Mona module, which uh, was taught by a team of five professors. Uh, it was interdisciplinary and each professor was responsible uh, for a certain part of classes uh, uh, within one specific discipline, uh, political science, law, economics, uh, sociology, cultural studies, and so on. Um, the format of the course um, is not, um, there are no limitations actually on the format of the course. This may be just a regular course, which is included in the um, teaching program. So this may be an intensive summer program, summer schools or intensive courses you provide uh, during the summer uh, holidays. Um, and this also may be a short specialized program uh, including several courses. So the courses uh, currently in the um, present guidelines, there is no indication, but uh, uh, it used to be uh, mentioned in the previous guidelines that these courses may be either general and introductory and targeting all the students, uh, for example, at your university, providing them with some basic information, um, background knowledge on the European Union integration processes or cooperation between between EU and uh, your country, but this also may be quite focused specialized courses. For example, mm -hmm. my module uh, currently is uh, um, uh, related to the uh, legal science, so it's one discipline uh, covered only with this module. Um, and uh, uh, it is rather specialized because uh, it addresses um, uh, specific aspects of legal approximation and implementation of the agreement between EU and Armenia. But um, even though it is uh, in the law discipline, my uh, target audience is multidisciplinary and the course is adjusted to meet the needs of students coming not only from the legal domain, but also political science, uh, uh, public administration and other related disciplines, including, by the way, uh, also linguistics, uh, tra legal translators uh, who necessarily need the basic understanding of the legal approximation as a process in order to be able to provide professional translation of uh, the related documents. Uh, Christina Jan, would you yeah, like to yes. hear? Yes. Yeah, chess is another type. Chess is, the is a position that is uh, done by one professor. It's usually a person who has an outstanding um, career in European studies. I mean, uh, it, it needs to be a person who knows specifically and he, he or she uh, is uh, very is specialized in a specific area. It might be, for example, in law, it might be European law, it might be uh, political science or European integration, for example, it might be economics. So it is a teaching post with specialization in European Union for a university professor. That professor needs to be a university, uh, this person needs to work for the specific university. And uh, this uh, activity is also like module, it is also um, organized for three years. Uh, what it implies, it implies that the professor, the Jean Monnet chair, will need to have at least 90 hours, teaching hours per year. If in case of module, we have 40 teaching hours. In case of a chair, the professor needs to have at least 90 teaching hours during the year. 
that person can also have a team to support and enhance the activities of the chair. In uh, comparison with the last year, I guess this option has been added this year, which means that the chair, the person or the professor is not doing everything alone, but it also, uh, but the, he or she have, has a team that supports and they can also uh, teach, for example, for seminars or workshops, this team can also, uh, additional hours can be added. Uh, in case, for example, there are also cases, and it's also highlighted in the guidelines, if there is a thing that the person will be substituted by some reason, uh, by the university, this person needs to be substituted, it is very important to take into consideration that the substituted person needs to have equal uh, qualifications as the person who won the activity. So this is also very important to take into consideration. And maybe I will also finalize with the Council, uh, Center for Excellence. Yeah, Anna Jan. Uh, yes, Center Chris, for Anna Jan, just, uh, uh, just a very uh, short remark concerning chairs, and then uh, mm -hmm. I will give the floor. Um, and just, and just to underline that uh, if uh, uh, you involve, in addition to the chairholder, uh, any other members uh, of, of the team, it is very important. If they are provide teaching, this should be uh, beyond the 90 uh, hours which are to, to be taught exclusively by the chairholder. And uh, uh, actually, um, from my perspective, uh, I think involving uh, other team members is very beneficial for your university, for your application, especially if these are young scholars, for example, mm -hmm. this may be PhD uh, candidates uh, or um, uh, just uh, people who recently uh, go to their PhD title. And uh, this uh, this is really beneficial for the application. And obviously it's very beneficial for your university and for uh, for these young scholars. Um, for example, uh, when um, this possibility even uh, was not uh, formalized as it is now, I used to serve as an assistant to Jean Monachier at Cave Mahila Academy, Professor Roman Petrov, and it was a very helpful experience uh, that uh, um, influenced uh, my further research and uh, teaching. So I'm very grateful for uh, this opportunity. And I think um, if you are planning to organize a year as a Jean Monnet professor, I think it is very important also to provide such opportunities for younger colleagues uh, from your department. Okay, and this is for excellence, this is a special uh, type of activity. This can be as uh, centers that are uh, all centers. This is not just a module, this is not just a teaching, it is not just a chairholder, but it is for a whole center can apply or um, a department that has a specific interest in European studies. They can apply for the Center for Excellence and of Excellence and they will serve as focal points of competence and knowledge on new subjects. It means that it's, it doesn't only include the uh, teaching and research activities, but most importantly, it includes also the role, as already said, uh, in the fourth, I mean, like the column, you can see that it must also, uh, that, that center must also serve as a focal point for uh, bridging uh, the academic world with the policymakers, academic world with the civil society, academic world with the general public. Uh, and uh, the role of the uh, Center for Excellence is to be open for everybody who do, who, oh, who and reach out to students also from different faculties. It's not if, uh, for example, our center, Center for European Studies, once becomes Center for Excellence, our courses or our activities should not only aim our students, but also the students from, for example, sociology department, uh, psychology department, mathematics or physics, and somehow to deliver and to present what is European Union, to present the uh, knowledge about European uh, policy and of course the uh, Center for Excellence needs also to build some synergies or networks, not only with the uh, centers or, uni or just uh, departments that uh, teach or are involved in Jean Monnet activities on the local uh, level, but they also need to go beyond the local and start cooperating with uh, universities and centers of excellence uh, in the region, uh, on the uh, in, in Europe, in EU, or just be, or go beyond even EU and, for example, to cooperate with 
various centers of excellence that now exist, for example, in the United States or in Latin America or in Australia or wherever you wish. But Center for Excellence serves as a focal point. It's teaching, research, and uh, outreach and communication and building also the knowledge about European Union uh, on, on the, let's say, on the university level and beyond the university level. Yeah, maybe we'll go to yes. the a budget line. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, I'm going to the budget if you would like. Yeah, the budget hasn't changed. Uh, it's the same uh, for uh, our um, uh, uh, all actions. For Jean-Louis uh, modules, uh, you can apply to the maximum 30,000 euro. That can be a um, that can be a contribution of EU. Your project might be even more, but uh, European Union will uh, cover only th only the maximum amount that the European Union can cover is 30,000 euro. For Jean Monnet Chess, it's 50,000 euro. And for Jean Monnet Center for Excellence, it's 1,000 euro. 100,000 euro. Uh, the thing is that in comparison with previous years, there usually we had uh, something like teaching cost plus a top up that are usually added to the amount. This year, it seems that this part is taken out. Uh, it's a bit uh, still uh, the, in the guidelines, if you go to the pages, for example, I'm sorry. Mm. There are specific age, pages starting from two, uh, 277 and until 280. Um, 80, you can see uh, the predefined amount that you can apply because uh, starting from now, you can uh, decide how many hours you decide and there was an amount that you apply for. Uh, that will that it includes uh, co uh, that covers uh, staff costs, uh, travel subsistence costs, equipment costs, subcontracting, and other costs. And after ap applying for the project, the um, according to the new rules, uh, the and you apply for specific amount that is determined. You can see if you go, uh, you need to find uh, other uh, because Armenia, for example, if we speak about Armenia, we are under the. Um, uh, column other, uh, you will uh, uh, choose specific amount. For example, if I say um, in case of modules, if you decide to have 120 to 150 hours, it is uh, for the duration of three years, you need to take into consideration that your amount will be 11,500. This is the predefined amount. If you apply for 151 to 180 teaching hours, it will be 14,000 and uh, until 360 hours. The same concerns uh, for uh, Jean Monnet and Jean Monnet Centers of Excellence. After you apply, after your application is reviewed, the team and the evaluators will look, uh, will, uh, look at your activities. That's why we were, we were saying that it's very important to build your um, uh, application in such a way that your events and activities will fit into your uh, objective objectives. Uh, they will be. Uh, they they will have clear uh, structure and understanding, and based on that, the evaluators will decide whether to leave that amount or maybe to increase or um, I hope not to decrease. But they will the final amount that you will get in case if you are elected, if your application is elected, will be de determined and decided by the evaluation group. This is very important thing for you to take into consideration because before when we applied and we filled out the budget form and there was a specific and when you applied it automatically calculated all amounts that was uh, the in the end and you knew that for example the total amount you applied is 21,000 out of which 75 or 80 percent is uh, covered by EU, you already knew the exact amount that, that you would get. But in this case, you apply with one amount and you will need to wait until the selection procedure is over and the final decision is made only after you, uh, after the selection and decision by the evaluators. Um, yes, uh, Christina John, thank you. But uh, I would uh, just anyway anyway raise some concerns about what is written in the guidelines. I think it is very important now to discuss. 
um, from my perspective, uh, like from the logical and systematic interpretation of the text of the guidelines, I think uh, there may be a technical uh, problem, a technical mistake here in, in, in the text of the guidelines. And uh, I think for the National Erasmus Plus offices, uh, uh, it could be uh, very important and to request uh, the clarifications from the agency, maybe they can provide additional interpretation. Um, because from my perspective, what is currently written, it's it's just maybe a, a technical technical mistake. Because um, uh, the logic uh, of the Jean Monnet module budget uh, was uh, really simple in the previous um, edition of the program. And uh, it was based on the very simple principle of calculation based on the number of teaching hours plus a fixed sum top up sum for uh, covering other um, uh, activities. And then from this total uh, amount, 75% of EU grant uh, were calculated. So currently what is written in the guidelines uh, seems rather as a complication in comparison with, uh, with the uh, previous procedures. So I guess uh, what is written currently in the guide guidelines refers primarily and maybe only to the Jean Monnet Centers of Excellence, where the budget is based on other principle of calculation, where you have to identify clearly the budget lines and uh, uh, calculate your real costs, and not only not the item costs as it is in Jean Monnet modules and years, but real costs, real expenses you're, uh, you would like to cover with the EU grant, and then it may be reviewed and uh, um, uh, evaluated uh, by by the by the agency and by the independent reviewers. So I think it is very important at this stage so that we are not too late uh, in in the timeframes of the application procedure to request the clarification from the agency on the budget calculation for Jean Monnet modules and Jean Monnet cheers. Maybe in the audience we have the representatives of other national agencies, na national offices of Erasmus Plus. Maybe they have already requested this information. But I think it's very important to make sure that uh, what is written in the guidelines is really what we have to follow in the application. Um, there are some, there are some uh, mixtures between seventy-five and eighty percent of exactly, exactly because. And, there might be some questions uh, raised. That's why we would like to request that information. It yes. is either 70, because on one page it says 75% is embedded, and then uh, when it's uh, when uh, about uh, we when the guideline states about if, how the award is done, they are speaking about 80%. So we need to understand. Unfortunately, we do not yet have the form. I mean, like the application form, the budget form may, may be based on that. We will be able to uh, make uh, some, uh, to understand the logic behind these uh, guidelines. But at this moment, we do not have. So uh, we hope that uh, as soon as we will get, or as soon as we will send this information, request some clarification, we will be able to give you more detailed information as well but we will just now uh, step to selection criteria yeah not just to mm -hmm. take too much time yeah. Anna Jan, please uh, yes the selection criteria remain the same they used to be under the previous guidelines uh, the same selection criteria there are four um, basic criteria both for um, modules cheers and john Monet centers of excellence uh, uh, each criteria is evaluated with the uh, criterion is evaluated with the uh, 25 points maximum uh, the relevance of the project, uh, uh, this is very important, and uh, this is what you justify at the very beginning when you start writing your application. Um, this is how the uh, specific action you are proposing addresses uh, the objectives of the Jean Monnet program, how it addresses largely the uh, EU uh, objectives uh, and uh, uh, from my experience and from my perspective uh, it is very important to demonstrate how your project uh, contributes for example to the identified priorities of the European Commission. There are five basic uh, priorities, they are very broad and they cover practically uh, all the areas uh, of uh, all the academic domains, so the Green Deal for example, and here you can uh, again cover various disciplines starting from natural science Sciences and to social sciences and law, um, then uh, the promoting democracy and uh, 
uh, strengthening the role of the European Union as a global player. So um, I think it, it is quite important to, to take one of these objectives and to demonstrate how your project uh, contributes, uh, how um, in what uh, regard is relevant to these uh, major objectives uh, of the European Union. And then, of course, you have to demonstrate uh, the relevance of your project uh, to the local context, obviously, um, and uh, for your uh, university uh, in particular. So uh, I think it is uh, uh, logical to start with uh, the uh, program uh, objectives and EU objectives, uh, then address the local objectives, maybe uh, even at the country level or region level for the Eastern Partnership, for example, or for Armenia, Georgia, Ukraine, Moldova, other countries. Uh, um, and uh, uh, then demonstrate the relevance uh, of the program of the initiated project uh, for uh, your uh, institution. Uh, the quality of the project design uh, and uh, implementation um, addresses um, the logic of your project, what you are proposing, um, what activities are included, how clearly they are defined, and how clearly the stages of implementation of the project are uh, defined, uh, how, the how the quality uh, assurance is uh, um, uh, designed and uh, uh, what tools uh, will be employed in order to ensure the quality of the project implementation, dissemination, and, and generally achieving the uh, objectives uh, of, of the project. Uh, quality of the partnership and cooperation arrangements. Um, for uh, John Monet networks and John Monet projects, uh, which you, we used to have in the previous uh, editions uh, of the John Monet activities, it was one of the core elements uh, for John Monet um, cheers uh, modules and uh, center of excellence. Center of Excellence may also require very strong partnership and cooperation, uh, especially when you involved the experts not only from one institution but also uh, from beyond uh, your university. Uh, for uh, modules and John Monet Cheers, uh, partnership is not required, uh, but uh, you may consider this as, a, as an option. There may be a module which is told to jointly by several universities. And I think uh, this uh, would be a kind of uh, both innovation and uh, also a uh, very important step in um, developing the European studies and your cooperation with other universities, either locally or internationally. So I think it may be an option if you are thinking about a Jean a module to offer something in a joint uh, format. But uh, also what is uh, very important here uh, is sort of the quality of the team. Uh, it does not necessarily have to be a team involving members from other universities or other countries, but the team which is going to implement the Jean Monnet module or Jean Monnet here. But the quality of team, first of all, presupposes the availability of relevant uh, teaching, research, and maybe additionally practical experience of the team members. Uh, it is very important to ensure that all of the um, participants which are included in the application have relevant uh, profiles, teaching and research profiles, uh, that they have relevant publications it is stated in the guidelines that this experience and publications should be related to, to both European studies, uh, broadly understood, and thematically to the uh, topic of the proposed uh, project. And uh, finally, the impact, uh, of course, uh, the results of the project implementation should be uh, beneficial not only for you as a, as a project uh, coordinator or team member, not only for your university, but also clearly go beyond the uh, university uh, only. And uh, um, you may here identify both um, uh, short-term uh, impact 
long-term impact specific outcomes so of course you will have to start with the deliverable deliverable <laughs> sorry the products of your project uh, specific results so this may be uh, the improved uh, syllabus of the course this may be a number of academic publications this may be a monograph this may be uh, methodological guidelines um, policy proposals uh, uh, whatever you are planning um, uh, and uh, these are considered as the products of your project. You will also have the specific outcomes, the results. For example, um, after the implementation of uh, your project, uh, let's say 100 or 200 students will get uh, new knowledge, uh, develop the necessary professional and soft skills. Um, where the academic community will elaborate uh, and produce new knowledge on the topic of the project and so and so on. So these are the outcomes of your project, but you also will have to identify the impact of your project uh, broadly on academic community, on um, decision makers, maybe on civil society, again, it depends, uh, or on the industry, maybe it all depends on the content of your project and on, on the topic, on the discipline you are working uh, within. And here, of course, you identify what short-term impact just right after the um, uh, implementation of the project, after the project life cycle, and then uh, in the future, what long-term uh, impact you may expect uh, resulting from the project implementation. Christina Jan, would you like to add on the criteria? I just saw that there was a question regarding the minimum score. You are right. There is yes, a minimum. I will score. just. Uh, yeah, this is it. Right, if yes. last year's it was, if last year's previously, you you would need to score minimum of thirteen points from each criterion. Yeah, this year it is fifteen points. But in order for uh, for the proposals to be considered further, you need to have at least seventy points. Of course, if we uh, count uh, all four points, it will become still 60, and I do not understand how this 70 and 60 uh, plays out, but still uh, at, at minimum 70 points needs to be collected by each proposal in order to be considered for further um, election procedure. Uh, there is another new thing that was uh, also uh, put uh, uh, highlighted in, our, in the guideline, that in case if, for example, two proposals or three proposals or four proposals get equal points, uh, the election committee will look and will prioritize uh, at, uh, those proposals that have uh, higher points in relevance of the project and the impact. So whenever you construct your um, application, please make sure that the relevance of your project and the impact are really very well defined because these two points will be uh, crucial whenever in case if, for example, two uh, projects have uh, the same, uh, get the same points they will look at the relevance of the project and the impact. If somebody has one point higher than the other one, then that um, uh, application will uh, be prioritized. Uh, for that, please, uh, uh, it's also written here that you need to read carefully the selection criteria for Jean Monnet modules, Jean Monnet chairs, and Centers for Excellence. These are the pages 272, 276, and the expected impact of the project. Impact it becomes one of the most important uh, points whenever you are whenever you are writing your uh, proposal and your application. Please bear that in mind as well. And in comparison with the last year, whenever we had whenever we applied for Jean Monnet modules, I remember that the quality of the team was one of the most important points. Now it mostly states about the cooperation. So uh, we also need to understand how uh, the quality of the team is included here and how how we can uh, i mean like stress the quality of the team now they are speaking now the, the stress is pay, made on the quality of cooperation and not only of the team okay this is also difference 
with uh, the previous year's uh, Jean Monnet activities. And now, uh, if we want to start, if you want to wish to start, if you want, if you have an idea, let's get to some tips. Uh, yes, uh, Christian, John, just, just a very, very brief uh, note on this. Uh, the 70 points, uh, this is just a minimum score to be considered for funding. But uh, as a rule, uh, the threshold is very, very high and uh, uh, the selection is very competitive. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, as a rule, it's more than 85 for modules, um, mm -hmm. like the actual um, minimum, not mm -hmm. uh, the formal one, but the actual minimum. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, also the selection criteria, as Christina mentioned, they are clearly explained in the tables, uh, in the guidelines. So it, it, they are very detailed and you just have to follow uh, this, this criteria, how they are identified in the guidelines. Uh, the issue is that this is a, um, standard table which is used for all type of Jean Monnet activities and uh, I think uh, the team is included here and it is still for cheers and for modules still it is one of the most crucial elements of the quality of the team uh, what regards cooperation and partnerships this is uh, rather more relevant to uh, other other activities, maybe center of excellence. It used to be very relevant for Jean Monnet projects, uh, for the networks, uh, um, but still, I think for modules and cheers, uh, the quality of the team is what you have to focus on. And uh, uh, now, just just to start, um, John would like to proceed. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, as we have always said in our previous presentations as well, before you start. Uh, please go back. There, these are here are the links where you can go and you can look at the previously selected projects for you to get some idea. What was this project about? Why was it selected? Uh, what was uh, which are the, uh, these, the details of the project that uh, that the election committee uh, decided to cho to um, to choose. Uh, you can also look at the uh, database of implemented projects. This is also you can also if you Google or if you look for uh, at the uh, the projects, you can you can always find the, um, some at least short summary of what who did what. And of course, for those who have already applied but they were unsuccessful, I would uh, or we, we would just like really uh, recommend to go back to your proposals, go back to your proposals and read and look at them. And also read the evaluations to understand which, uh, which features um, didn't allow your proposal to uh, to get uh, to get the funding. What points? Uh, which are the points that you need to take care, or or you 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 should look more um, carefully, or you should explore better or develop better in order to be elected for the. Uh, the next time you apply. These are the most important things that you have. And of course, uh, we, you can always uh, ask those who have already, who are already involved in the modules or who either on the local level or on the international level to ask for their uh, opinion on how to start the procedure, the application procedure. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, thank you. And uh, now we would like to focus on uh, some of the recommendations. Again, uh, a disclaimer that they're based only on our subjective experience uh, uh, we have. Uh, so before you start, uh, it is very important to carefully read the call when it is out. Uh, the program guidelines uh, and uh, the uh, model grant agreement, which you can also find on the official website and other related documents. So all the official documentation, you uh, first have to uh, carefully read and identify the relevant parts and what you have to focus on. And of course, from procedural perspective, you, uh, your uh, institution, your university has to be uh, registered and uh, have the peak number, which is very important in order to enable your uh, online application to be submitted. And uh, if you are not sure whether you have uh, this number or not, or if you have to initiate uh, this procedure, you first of all have to refer to your international department and uh, uh, the officers at your uh, international uh, department will take care of, of this procedure, or you just will have to uh, know what, what the number is if you have already been registered. 
then the next step, of course, is to design the project concept to develop uh, the general idea. And here you analyze uh, the priorities of your department, of your faculty, of your university. If the project is interdisciplinary, you uh, coordinate this project idea with your teaching and research uh, interests. Um, and of course, uh, you think uh, about uh, the team who is going to implement the project. And the team of the project uh, uh, may be understood uh, as, as a, in, in the narrow uh, sense. So these are people who are involved in the academic activities and who will be then listed in the application with the relevant uh, CVs and the description of their profiles. And also, uh, these are other people who are not appearing in the application, but who are really crucial for successful implementation of the project. Uh, for example, my module uh, from academic perspective is implemented only by myself, but uh, I am greatly supported with the university administration, uh, first of all, with the accounting department, financial department, and uh, this uh, internal cooperation, successful internal cooperation is very important important, of course, for successful uh, implementation of the project uh, in the future. So you will have to arrange also this uh, cooperation, but this uh, mainly addresses the stage of implementation of the project. But anyway, when you start developing your um, uh, application, of course, you have to communicate with the administration, with the accounting department, because uh, while applying, you will also have to submit the declaration of owner and uh, um, the university will have to agree to co-fund your project to contribute uh, the remaining 25% uh, of the project grant. So of course, uh, you will have to uh, communicate your project um, plans and uh, to coordinate your efforts with the university administration. Um, then uh, you can also think about finding relevant partners it is very important uh, if you decide if this is relevant to your Jean Monnet uh, activity. First of all, this may be for the uh, center of excellence. Uh, it is uh, better to have previous experience uh, of cooperation. So you involve your networks, uh, you uh, build upon the results of previous cooperation, and you include the reliable partners with, with whom you have the experience of cooperation. Then uh, if your module uh, or chair activities presuppose involving guest speakers, of course, uh, uh, it is better to identify them already at the stage of application. Uh, it is clear that guest speakers are not members of the team. So if there are any cha changes occur, of course, uh, this is uh, all possible and uh, you will be able to invite other people or more people or not to invite people who you uh, have listed in the application. But anyway, it is, um, uh, it is a good practice, I think, uh, at least to outline uh, who are the potential candidates to be invited to serve as guest speakers. Uh, and of course, it is very important to think about the dissemination strategy, um, what uh, will be your target audiences, how we will address your priority groups, uh, what tools and what communication channels you're going to use in order to disseminate the results of your project. Uh, it is also very important to ensure that uh, you as an academic coordinator or a team member have uh, the uh, respective profiles in teaching and research. And by profile, I mean both the experience, which is proved with your publications. You will have to list at least six uh, publications which are directly relevant to the project uh, and also provide the complete list or the list of selected, uh, the longer list of selected publications in your CV attached to the application. And all these um, together with the description of your teaching experience uh, constitute your profile, your teaching and research profile. Um, but um, together with the, the information you include in the application, I think it is also very important to build your uh, visibility and to create your uh, profiles uh, in the um, academic platforms. This may be a research uh, net, uh, research gate net, net. This may be Academia Edu. This may be other uh, platforms. Uh, um, 
which serve uh, um, as a platforms for gathering the information about uh, research activity of scholars. Uh, and I think it is very important because uh, maybe the reviewers while evaluating your application will just Google your names to see what you are writing about to, to uh, get acquainted with your publications. And I think it is very beneficial um, to have these uh, profiles well uh, elaborated. Uh, for Armenian participants, I just would like to make a very brief announcement that the Center for Interdisciplinary Studies will organize a training session on how to develop your research profiles, how to increase your visibility as a scholar. So please follow the announcement because most probably it will be organized in um, two weeks uh, in, uh, in the face-to-face -face or online format. Uh, then, uh, together with the application, uh, with the description of your projects, you will also have to submit, already at the application stage, the developed uh, course syllabi, either of one course, if this is a single course module, or all of the courses which will be included in the module or which will be taught by the Jean Monnet year. So you will have to uh, provide already elaborated and high quality uh, syllabi with the defined topics, uh, discussion questions, assignments, recommended literature, uh, other activities which you include uh, in the teaching program. Uh, then, uh, if, uh, um, if you mentioned that uh, one of the results of your project will be research or scholarly article, you will also have to provide at least a very brief outline or uh, an annotation, a summary uh, of the planned um, article. Uh, the same with the teaching materials. Uh, it may be sufficient just to provide the structure, the content uh, of, uh, of your publication, which you are going to present as a deliverable of the project. Uh, and finally, um, all these uh, activities should be done um, from uh, as uh, should we start uh, in developing as soon as possible so that uh, you are ready with your application and with the supporting uh, documents uh, before the deadline. And it is also recommended to apply at least one day before the official deadline because uh, from the experience on the day of the application, a lot of technical problems uh, uh, may occur and it may be really difficult to submit your application because uh, the server is uh, overloaded and uh, so, or anything can happen. For example, there will be no electricity and uh, all your efforts will be in vain. So it will be really pity to, to appear in such a situation. So just uh, at least one day before the deadline, uh, try to submit your application. The application will consist of the electronic application, which you fill in uh, in the PDF form provided uh, on the official website, plus uh, the detailed description of your project uh, in the Word format, um, and uh, maybe a budget uh, for sure for Center of Excellence, but for uh, modules and chairs, we will see how it works actually when the call is uh, open and when all the uh, documents uh, are available. Uh, Christina John, do you have anything to add uh, to the stage? Well, I guess uh, you have already uh, covered all the points. Uh, for the deadlines, please, yeah, that makes sure that you are applying in, uh, on time. And of course, I, uh, I would also recommend uh, whenever you are preparing to make sure that if you are pre uh, applying for, with a team, to make sure that you have all the relevant information about your team in advance. And you work as a team, not just one person filling out everything while others providing some this or that materials, because it will require some time. We still do not know the, the full format of the application form. Hopefully it, it is the same, but still uh, it, uh, it, is, it is preferable that you have in advance. And if you are, since there is also a line about cooperation and partnership, you need, if you want to have a partnership, if you want to have guest lectures, you need to also get those um, uh, commitments from other universities or from other centers in advance to include them. Uh, regarding the de detailed syllabi, I guess Anna has already covered that it needs to be as detailed as possible. Of course, we understand that throughout the process of the uh, activity, you can you can make some changes, but you need to be as detailed as possible for the evaluators to see uh, the whole picture. 
Okay, now we will get to our personal experience. I mean, like our modules. Anna will speak first, and then I will finish uh, with our module and we'll finish with our presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much, Christina. Uh, so my module uh, is uh, was selected in uh, 2019. So currently it is the second year of implementation of the project. Uh, the module is called the shorter uh, title. And by the way, when you design uh, the title, there may be the long title, which clearly explains what your project is about, but there also can be the shorter title of the project, which you use in the communication and the dissemination and which is more appealing for the target audiences. So uh, my longer title I will not mention here, it deals with the approximation of uh, uh, Armenian national legislation with the EU Aki, and the short uh, name of the project is Legal Approximation Laboratory. So this is a teaching program which uh, um, aims at the developing of both theoretical knowledge and relevant skills of students coming from law, public um, administration, political science, linguistics, and other disciplines which may be relevant professionally, relevant to the processes of uh, legal approximation. Uh, the course, the module consists of um, the teaching course, uh, including several sub-courses, in particular the issues in EU law course, theory and methodology of legal approximation, and practical. Um, the first two theoretical courses uh, um, are covered in the first semester, while the practicum in the second semester. The duration uh, of, the, of the course uh, is uh, 60 hours. So each of the courses, uh, of the sub-courses, of the structural elements of, of the course uh, are of the 20 uh, academic hours. Um, the syllabus uh, was uh, already designed at the application stage, but I made some minor corrections uh, on the basis of uh, the first year experience of implementation of the project. Uh, in the first year, the course was taught offline for Armenian students, uh, for inter multidisciplinary group of students. But uh, since uh, uh, in the second year, uh, we have the uh, limitations related to uh, with the COVID situation and uh, the uh, offline uh, teaching was quite problematic. I transferred the course into the distance uh, learning, uh, that is uh, the online uh, format. And this, uh, um, together with some uh, shortcomings, uh, which are not that uh, huge in comparison with the advantages, actually allowed involving students coming from other countries. And uh, this was really beneficial to have not only multidisciplinary, but also international audience of students with different background, with different uh, experience, with uh, coming from different contexts. And uh, now, in addition to Armenian students, I also have students coming from Georgia, from Ukraine, and even from Mexico. So a very uh, interesting international inter multidisciplinary uh, group and uh, through which uh, through, through such communication uh, within the group uh, in the format of small group uh, small groups exercises uh, communication, uh, Armenian students, of course, may also develop their professional networks going beyond their home country, but also involving uh, international peers. Uh, in addition to the uh, course, I also have the summer school which is open not only to the students, but also to professionals and academics. The duration of the summer school is 20 hours. So the complete, the whole duration of the module uh, is 80 hours in comparison with 40 minimum hours as required uh, by the rules. So in addition to teaching activities, the course and summer school, I also have international academic roundtables on the issues of legal approximation planned. The workshops for practitioners, uh, the first workshop uh, uh, has been successfully organized for the staff members of the National Assembly of the Parliament of Armenia, where we discuss the practical issues and problems, uh, the methodology of legal approximation. Uh, and of course, research component is very important. I planned three academic articles uh, to be prepared and published uh, within the duration of uh, the project. The project has its um, web page at the 
website of the Blues of State University. Um, and you're invited to, to visit it and to get acquainted with the information there. Um, according to the rules, at, at least basic description should be provided at the website of the university. And uh, also there is a relevant page, the fa Facebook page of the project where you can also find, you can follow it and if you're interested in the issues of legal approximation and find out more about uh, our planned activities. Uh, also, the implementation of the module is supported with the Jean Monnet project, uh, already based on cooperation with partners uh, from Georgia and Ukraine. Uh, and the activities of this project supplement uh, the teaching activities in the module, add comparative perspective to the module, and also international cooperation perspective. But I'm just not focusing on the project details because uh, this year there is no opportunity to apply for Jean Monnet project. This is just to uh, note that it is possible to combine several Jean Monnet activities. Of course, they should not repeat uh, each other. The activities should not be repeated, but they can be supplemented, uh, complemented uh, by uh, each other. Okay, uh, Christina Jan, please present your experience. And I would finish our presentation with a description of our module. Some of you might may, maybe know about this module, some of you not, but this was the migration policy challenges in the EU and the South Caucasus. This module was developed uh, back in 2015 and it, uh, it was organized and it was taught by a team of uh, professors. It was uh, four people involved uh, and uh, two people were involved with multiculturalism, identity and values uh, course, which was more like an introductory. And that co course also uh, gave some insights what is migration and how these migration issues have uh, challenged EU, European value system, while the two others, legal regulation of the migration processes and asylum issues in the EU and RA and labor migration are more specialized courses. They were taught uh, during the second semester while the multiculturalism and identity as an introductory in general course was uh, taught during the first semester. So throughout our three years, we had the three cohorts that benefited from this uh, program. Uh, there have been also different workshops, guest lectures, roundtable discussions and textbook publications that uh, took place also throughout, uh, during this uh, activity. As a matter of fact, in case of like guest lectures, we had, uh, we planned one or two, but we had more, especially with UNHCR. We had a special cooperation with UNHCR and their representative uh, met with our students and students from uh, not only our students, but also outside from law department and presented the activities of the UNHCR. HCR. We later had a special roundtable discussion with the head of Migration Service Armenia uh, and the stu students uh, addressed their questions. There have been workshops about migration, about how to write also um, research papers on migration, how to do fact finding uh, missions, uh, all, all researches when we speak, of, when we deal with migrants or we want to uh, talk to migrants. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, uh, as a result, we had also public, we have also published one of our professors. He prepared pretty comprehensive textbook uh, on uh, labor migration that was published by the Yerevan State University. And it's now uh, used by students as the main textbook whenever they study uh, the labor migration policy in the EU and the South Caucasus. Also, I would like to mention that whenever we are speaking about the modules, you, we, we need to take into consideration that there is no uh, specific uh, restriction or uh, on, on the on the use of language. You can, uh, for example, on, a, on a, for Armenian community or for Armenian uh, university community, you are, of course, allowed to teach in Armenian. Uh, in our case, multiculturalism and identity and values, it was suggested as uh, either in Armenian or in uh, English. So in, um, in two, uh, two cases, we taught it in uh, English. In one case, it's in Armenian because of the students and their knowledge of language. So it, it depends on the choice of the student, while to others they were taught in uh, Armenian. So you are uh, free to choose the language of instruction. 
uh, this is also a very important thing for you to consider. I believe this much for us, uh, from us. Uh, sorry for if we took too, too much time uh, from you. Uh, there is also our contact information in case if you'd like to uh, send us separate questions, we will be happy to answer them. But now let's open the floor for questions, please. <clears throat> Thank you, ladies. Uh, we have got a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, some of them were uh, answered. One of them was answered by you, Christine. So uh, Lili Torchan's question is uh, out uh, for the moment. Um, I would read uh, two questions. Um, one is from Oksana Zamora. I think Ms. Kardava answered it in written, but it would be interesting to hear your responses and maybe your insights as well. Uh, if a Jean Monnet project on module would be focused only on a summer school, does it have a chance to be selected or it should have more activities for a wider dissemination? What's your intake? Mm. If I'm not mistaken, one of the previous modules at Brussels State University was mainly based on summer schools, if I'm not mistaken, but it's not only summer schools. You need, a, you can have a summer schools, but you also need to have the other activities as well, not only some, just try not to uh, have uh, solely uh, summer schools. On the institutional level, you also need to show the impact of the project on the institutional level as well. So uh, maybe you can uh, do it uh, together with several uh, representatives of several departments, uh, then that would be a good thing, but uh, there should be also other activities like workshops, round tables or conference or some other events that would also reflect, uh, that will also add, have an added value for your pro project. Anna, make it more uh, practically for the purposes of, of the module application, uh, you can design the new course. It may be interdisciplinary, it may be multidisciplinary, it may be embedded only in one discipline. It depends actually on, on, on your vision. Um, and you can also submit the existing courses as Jean Monnet modules. You can modify them, but uh, uh, it's not a must that you have to invent something uh, absolutely new. You can, you can use your teaching experience and you can submit your courses. But of course, it is very important to demonstrate a certain level of innovation in the courses you propose. So even, this is, if, even if this is a very basic classical course, let's say in uh, introduction to European Union law, for example, or introduction to the history of European integration, you have to add something innovative to the methodology of teaching or the topics covered or the exercises and assignments you are designing for students. So there should be some something um, uh, attractive, certain level of innovation from the methodological or uh, content uh, perspective in the courses you propose. And this may be, again, the courses taught during the academic year or proposed as a summer school. Again, you have to, first of all, remember that you have to have at least minimum 40 hours of teaching plus uh, additional uh, events which are covered uh, with the topic of, of your module, which are relevant to, to the course you are teaching or to a broader topic uh, of, of the module. If you can prove that your summer school are enough, summer school is enough, uh, and you can and you have and you can prove it with your application, then it, it, I believe it also stands a chance of have being elected. But it also needs to have some additional dissemination points, not only summer school. It needs definitely to have other dissemination points. If you search for uh, other modules that have been implemented the, uh, because they all have the official websites, uh, uh, you will see that there are a lot of projects, actually a lot of modules uh, that include only summer school. I mean, uh, from the teaching perspective, as a teaching activity, only summer courses, only summer schools open to international students, students coming from other universities in one country. So it depends again on your objectives, but it is quite possible to have only 40 hours minimum summer school as a teaching activity plus other events.
thank you very much. Uh, there are two more questions from uh, Cornelia Crocerescu. Pardon me if I mispronounced your last name. Uh, so one is uh, to you, Anna. You drew my attention to the fact that Jean Monnet module and Jean Monnet project have the same theme. How is it possible? And what are the objectives in the project as opposed to the modules? Thank you. Um, uh, of course, uh, you have to be very careful because um, the activities should not overlap. The projects, whereas applications should not overlap, and this is what have to be clearly observed when you design your application. The Jean Monnet module, the Legal Approximation Laboratory, focuses on legal approximation processes in the Armenian context. So the um, primary target audience are the students and practitioners in Armenia and uh, uh, providing them with relevant knowledge and skills. Uh, module focuses on teaching plus uh, academic activities and training for civil servants, for practitioners, not only civil servants, but practitioners involved in uh, legal approximation. This includes all, also civil society, judiciary, and so on. Um, the project uh, um, is also under the same theme, but with a different topic. And the project is, first of all, international. It has a comparative uh, perspective to the issues of legal approximation, because one of the objectives uh, over the project uh, is to design the database um, reflecting the experience uh, in legal approximation in uh, Armenia, Georgia, and Ukraine. So this is one of the objectives and one of the expected products of the project, the database. Uh, plus research, result, uh, focusing on comparative analysis of methodologies of legal approximation in three countries, resulting in a publication, plus uh, international events for students, which are the uh, international student competition, uh, focusing on uh, the simulation of legal approximation processes. So something similar to most courts in legal field, but since uh, I'm working rather in the disciplinary, interdisciplinary domain covering both law and political science uh, and public administration also. So the decision-making process broadly understood in the area of uh, legal approximation. The um, simulations uh, focus on, on these issues. So while module focuses on teaching plus some events, a uh, project adds new activities, uh, new products uh, to be elaborated. This is an international publication, the international database uh, under uh, the simulation uh, events uh, internationally organized for students coming from three countries. So there is no overlap uh, in terms of activities. And when I was applying for Jean Monnet project, I applied after the first year of implementation of the Jean Monnet module. So there is one year difference in uh, the time frames of these two activities. I clearly justified and uh, I compared all the events planned in the module and in the project and demonstrated that there is no overlap, there is no double funding pro problem and so on. So they, that they complement uh, each other, but there is no uh, overlap, both from the point of view of content and from the point of view of budget resources. Do we have another question? There seems to be another yes, one. Yes, yes, sorry, I was muted <laughs> and I was reading the question, pardon. Uh, from the same participant, is it possible that the target groups such as teachers in schools and vocational education and training providers are eligible for Jean Monnet modules action for intensive lifelong learning courses? As part of summer school or as part of different group, you can target them as a group, but uh, they can, uh, can they be the main uh, target? I'm a bit uh, skeptical if you can only have them as the main target. If I'm not mistaken, previously the Jean Monnet project had such uh, parts that you could have had special trainings for schools, for teachers and vocational training. Now, in case of the Jean Monnet module, it can be part of your teaching and research activities, I believe. If there is anything that the colleagues can add. Mm. 
Uh, from my understanding, there is no limitation as to the target audiences. It depends on the format of your activities you plan. And uh, it is important that your institution as an applicant, as a grant holder provides uh, this uh, teaching activity and uh, target audiences may be absolutely different. It depends on the objectives of your project. Plus, I believe it will also meet the main criteria that uh, the uh, guidelines state that it needs to be uh, that it is good that when the uh, module e, uh, e targets those who do not directly benefit from European studies, so that uh, people do, do not have any understanding of what is European Union or uh, about their uh, Legal. For example, the teachers uh, do, doing um, uh, teaching humans, there is a, there are special subjects uh, at schools where they are teaching, for example, political science, what is some parts of the political science, um, uh, human rights, law, or, or what, I mean, like there are such kind of subjects. So there can be special trainings for those teachers also to present uh, the what the European Union does. So especially for, I believe it will be very relevant for uh, Georgia and Moldova and Ukraine uh, in this uh, sense. But for us as well, I guess it will be interesting. You will also target those who do not directly benefit. It's not just students or PhD students. And uh, if uh, there are no uh, significant changes in the application form in the descriptive part, you will have uh, a special table where you describe your teaching activity, and then you will just have to mark what target mm -hmm. audiences uh, you are planning to address, and there you will have BA students, MA students, PhD students, uh, civil society, uh, practitioners, uh, and uh, other categories. Uh, so you, you will have the possibility to choose uh, your target audience, and I think there are no limits or any restrictions. Uh, it all depends on the objectives of your project and the format of your teaching activity. Uh, can I add? Yes, yes, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see me. Yes, I am. My greetings to all you. Um, yes, I would say that uh, teachers, uh, especially teachers, are very important target groups. I would say because, for example, in at schools, the uh, the teachers of history and teachers of civil education, they should know what is the European Union and European integration processes in Georgia because they should uh, they should um, uh, kind of educate the. Uh, uh, pupils and they should have the proper understanding themselves about the European Union and these processes because sometimes we have such kind of uh, problems when teachers only know what is the Soviet Union but uh, know nothing about European Union and this impacts highly on uh, um, awareness rising, um, vice versa, uh, 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 with regard to Soviet Union, uh, with regard to past, and not with regard to the future and about the European way of Georgian development. So I would say if uh, the um, uh, if uh, if uh, the project will show sustainability and go good explanation why the teachers should be the target group of, of course uh, uh, of, of course it it, it uh, would be uh, uh, great for example in our case uh, from the Caucasus University project our target groups were pupils uh, of course around them teachers uh, parents and etc but our main uh, target groups were uh, the pupils uh, at uh, uh, minority from minority uh, society why because they have uh, problems with the understanding of uh, information on georgian language they mostly listen to Russian media, so they, they, they have absolutely disinformation about European Union and European uh, Association process in Georgia. So it, it was proved that uh, pupils, the main target groups, were uh, the, one of the most uh, important, um, uh, important uh, field to show the real uh, goals, objectives, and uh, real uh, success for, for the implementation of, the, of such kind of project. And within this uh, project, uh, uh, we elaborated in Caucasus at the Caucasus University special, um, special teaching material. 
uh, about European Association in Georgia for the teachers of history and civil education. Mm -hmm. And currently we are on the process of uh, dissemin disseminating of these materials. And we had the great uh, maintenance and support from the Ministry of Education with this regard. Why not? It could be really teachers as main source of education in the country uh, target groups. If I may briefly as well, come in from the Ukrainian perspective a little bit. Uh, hello everybody, my name is Oksana holoko Havrashova, and I will speak a little bit later, but since we are discussing the cross-cultural, the, 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 the issues at stake, I would add also the Ukrainian perspective on that issue. And I would say, yes, the teachers are important target group. And as we see from this call, they are targeted similarly uh, very heavily by the next uh, type of projects we are not discussing today, expect because we are actually not allowed to participate as full-fledged participants to such projects, but the teachers as well in the EU are addressed as a primary We cannot hear you, Oksana, unfortunately. Something happened. No. Oh. Maybe you need to... That's okay, I think. Oh, okay. Switch on and switch off the audio. Or not, no. No, 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 we cannot hear you. No. I want to uh, thank for excellent presentation uh, to Anna and Christina and for your absolutely valuable recommendations to the audience. Uh, um, your presentation <laughs> uh, should be um, digesting. It's not very easy just to take at once and should be go over and over and to, to remember what you said, but we already recording that and it will put on um, the YouTube channel. So, uh, Aksana, probably you can continue if we can hear you. Uh, I think Aksana is not with us for the moment. She perhaps uh, is rebooted. Ah, uh, no, not unfortunately. I want to remind you that we have this guide, program guide, yeah? And uh, these pages, 2072 until 2076, whatever, um, yeah, you can find uh, all the information about the um, Jean Monnet actions. And please go through that. Absolutely, this is the first source. Uh, our experts already told you about that. So, uh, may, I just, may I just one one short one short note yes. concerning uh, just uh, forgot to mention that uh, the format of, of your teaching activities may also be online format. Yeah, it used to be in the previous program, but now it's even more topical. So it may be face to face uh, course, but it's also maybe uh, mixed or online course. So this is also a possibility to think about. Just a very short one. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for a very good uh, uh, comment. It's a very important what, what you said. And of course, we should turn and, you know, transfer our teaching uh, facilities uh, to the, this online platform as well. So, yes, don't forget about that. Um, Aksana, could we hear you or? Just a moment. I just came in. Is it working? Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. Fine. Perfectly. Not again. No, 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 no. <laughs> Your computer doesn't allow you to, to say the main, main <laughs> words you want to address to us. No, Oksana, unfortunately not. We cannot hear you. Okay, uh, it seems that we don't have questions for the moment and we, uh, during the break, we will uh, think that the 
the technical problem that Sana has for the moment, it will be, you know, solved. Um, before breakfast time, uh, I want to say important things. Um, it's very sad for our office, and I think that uh, it will be sad for all the people or our colleagues who know uh, our very, very nice colleague, Edizo Romunian. Uh, unfortunately, she is leaving uh, to another project, to another office, uh, to teach for Armenia. It's a big, very interesting project. Um, and this is the last online meeting Edith has for, uh, for yesterday and for today. Uh, I really want to thank you on behalf of many, many of colleagues on behalf of our office, on behalf of, of me, for your excellent, absolutely uh, wonderful work, very, very professional, very deep with great commitment, really, really professional. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope that um, uh, my colleagues uh, could say many, many words, difficult to talk. Uh, thank you. Um, we will be in contact, of course. Uh, we are friends, not only colleagues. We will miss your, um, your experience, your bright character, your talks. We already miss, miss that. Thank you very much for your great, great work and great support to this program, to our colleagues, to our institutions, to students, to individuals, to all, to our office. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lana. This, this was very touching and I really appreciate uh, you and I really appreciate all of you. But of course, first of all, my colleagues at NEO, uh, my team with whom I have grown to be who I am, as you say, it's thanks to you, it's thanks to Ani, to Navart and to all the colleagues that I've uh, met, uh, thanks to Erasmus+. Plus. Uh, I wish you all um, best of luck with Erasmus+. Plus. It's going to continue for another seven years, and I want to uh, be sure and I want to learn that our higher education institutions are improving and uh, bettering their opportunities uh, thanks to Erasmus+. Plus. And of course, I'm going to stay within the field of education. Uh, I'm educationalist at heart. I'm going to the um, public education sector now, but uh, with my heart and also um, uh, all of you know where to find me. Yerevan is a small city and online domain is open for all of us. So um, I will leave my uh, contacts on um, LinkedIn in the chat. If any of you wants to keep in touch, I will be more than happy. Thank you very much for this. Lana, thanks a lot. Thank you. And now we deserve to have 15 minutes break. See you in 15 minutes.
is it? Is it working? Yes.
Dear colleagues, we continue our sessions devoting to Jean Monnet activities. Now, this is the last part. We had excellent uh, presentations on behalf of our jo Georgian colleague, on behalf of uh, Armenian colleagues, and we still have three presentations ahead. It will be uh, experience coming from Kazakhstan, Georgia, and Ukraine. We hope that you all are well uh, and um, already got a little bit more energi en en energetic after the break. Okay, and the floor is given to Ms. Janar Medeubaeva, who is representing Gumilov Eurasian National University. Janar, please. Uh, good evening, colleagues. Uh -huh. Can you hear me? Yes, a little bit closer probably to the microphone. <laughs> okay. Okay. Then, just a moment. Uh, I would like uh, to greet all participants of today's excellent uh, meeting. Uh, also, also, I would like uh, to thank the organizers of today's uh, meeting uh -huh, for the possibility to connect and uh, exchange uh, views with our colleagues from Armenia, Georgia, Ukraine. And uh, let me uh, to share our experience on expl uh, implementation of uh, Jean Monnet Chair, Chair, European Diplomacy Project. Uh, just a moment, I want uh, to try demonstrate my presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So. Is my presentation visible? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm a coordinator of the project, uh, Jean Mana Chair of European Diplomacy, uh, which um, has been implemented uh, last three years uh, since uh, 2018 at the uh, European uh, uh, Gumilev National uh, University at the Faculty of International Relations. Relations. Uh, then um, I want to say that our university is actively involved uh, in Erasmus Plus activity, and that there are um, tw uh, 12 uh, programs, scientific programs, in the framework of, of this uh, very important uh, activity. And our department, I mean our uh, project, uh, our uh, project team uh, has been realizing the project uh, aimed at uh, study and uh, the dissemination of uh, ideas and values of European diplomacy in Kazakhstan and other countries of our uh, region. And uh, I think that uh, uh, the uh, very important aspect uh, for a successful um, application um, is the uh, definition of uh, aim, the uh, pro uh, object of your future project. And uh, uh, since our project is uh, uh, and Jan Monet pro activities in, a whole, in generally all types of activities are academic ones uh, mostly. 
uh, we um, uh, defined we have defined our aim of our project as um, academic assistance to dissemination and promotion of European values, ideas of European integration um, and European diplomacy in Eurasian space, um, specifically in Kazakhstan and other countries of uh, Central Asia and. Uh, uh, here, I uh, want to note that uh, uh, it's very important to um, uh, select, to uh, choose currently the topic of your future project. And in our case, in our case, we uh, real, uh, while uh, defining the topic of our project, of our future project, we relied on their uh, enhanced cooperation uh, and uh, close uh, economic cooperation uh, between European Union and our Republic based on mutual interests on various spheres. And uh, we uh, uh, argue that uh, Kazakhstan needs in the first democratization of uh, uh, social, economic, uh, political spheres in our country and European values and uh, European standards uh, must be introduced in uh, various uh, spheres of uh, our statehood. Uh, statehood, and I think that uh, such um, relevant uh, topic, relevant uh, issue, issue. Um, define their uh, future um, outcome of our application. Then, um, uh, in order to achieve uh, the main uh, goal of uh, our uh, project, we uh, put uh, flowing tasks, uh, tasks in four um, aspects. Uh, the first of all, uh, their um, uh, educational aspect is very uh, important for implementation of a project uh, uh, aims in a project implementation. Uh, uh, the first goal is forming uh, students understanding deep knowledge of uh, evolution, achievements and current issues of European integration and diplomacy in Kazakhstan's higher education. Higher education and uh, as you know, um, Gene Monet activities, um, projects, especially uh, Jean Monet uh, Chair, uh, are the pro projects aimed at uh, academic and educational spheres. Uh, we uh, mostly aimed at um, academic uh, and uh, educational aspect of uh, implementation of our project, but um, their scientific aspect uh, of um, implementation of the project um, must be provided for successful application and successful implementation of your project in future. And we uh, define uh, this aspect as uh, to give impulse to research on issues of the European diplomacy, foreign policy at the University of Kazakhstan and uh, Central Asia. Central Asia and uh, regarding the geography of our project, uh, I think that uh, it's very um, beneficial uh, to cover more geographical uh, regions, I mean more countries in order to uh, give the relevant uh, character for your uh, future project. And uh, as you see, we uh, cover uh, not only our country, uh, but uh, universities, uh, educational organizations of Central Asian uh, countries. And the third very important aspect of uh, implementation of the project is methodological aspect, uh, in increasing the quality of the teaching disciplines on the European integration issues, diplomacy in the regional universities of Kazakhstan by providing information, methodological support. And here I want to note that our target groups are uh, wide. We um, cover not only students of our university, but uh, students of uh, other uh, regional universities of Kazakhstan, you know, students of all levels. Um, first of all, uh, bachelor students, master students, and doctoral students are involved um, in uh, implementation of uh, our project. Project then, their uh, teachers, uh, their uh, um, 
lecturers of regional universities uh, and colleges and secondary schools on, sus on such subject subjects and disciplines as history, uh, political sciences, uh, journalism, and etc., a very important target group for our project. And informational viewpoint uh, uh, assistant to the further promotion of the European values the European Union's recognition in Kazakhstan society and the Central Asian space through available media resources. And uh, here I want to underline uh, such um, a component of uh, project implementation as ideological one, because uh, it's too um, uh, important to um, provide uh, to uh, design uh, the activities uh, related to ideological moments of uh, our future project. In our case, in our case, uh, the, the matter of uh, enhancing the cooperation, their um, mutual uh, understanding between European Union and Kazakhstan, especially the recognition of European values by Kazakhstani uh, citizens, by Kazakhstani young people, are very important, are very relevant for our uh, project. And uh, what about the real implementation of our project? As I said, um, since our project is an uh, educational project, um, we um, uh, developed um, several uh, disciplines on European integration and diplomacy. And today, today um, uh, there are five or six uh, disciplines I've been uh, uh, teaching uh, at our faculty, at our faculty, and uh, from this list of uh, disciplines, uh, this, such disciplines as evolution of European diplomacy, uh, then um, uh, political aspects of European integration, that uh, 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 genesis and evolution of European diplomacy, uh, these uh, three um, disciplines uh, were developed by our project team. And other disciplines uh, were their uh, previous um, uh, educational programs of our faculty um, at the uh, Department of International Relations. Relations, and then as you see, uh, our uh, subjects, our disciplines, are uh, provided in uh, three languages, in English, Russian, uh, Kazakh, and uh, the main uh, target group um, uh, in, uh, at our faculty are bachelor students, but uh, uh, from, the list, from this list, uh, two disciplines as uh, evolution of European diplomacy and economic model of European integration are provided for master students. Master students. Then uh, here we can ask uh, what's the difference between a module and chair? Uh, because uh, as as you know, uh, the, uh, both uh, projects are uh, educational ones. And then, in case of uh, chairs, in case uh, gen mona chairs, we must uh, plan. We have we must. Uh, uh, design more uh, disciplines, not only one module, but we uh, must uh, plan and design several modules with uh, two or more disciplines in one module. And actually we must design more academic hours, hours with a, a wider structure of your teaching staff teaching staff because um, as you see, uh, if we um, uh, plant uh, six or seven uh, disciplines for implementation of uh, your project, we must um, form this uh, teaching staff with uh, fee, uh, five or six uh, members of your future um, teaching staff and with uh, the, um, uh, I mean, in their uh, case of teaching staff, I want uh, to know that uh, it's very um, uh, crucial uh, to keep balance uh, between uh, gender aspects and um, aspects related relating to their number of um, young peoples and elder peoples uh, in structure of your teaching staff. 
we must keep the balance between uh, young people's, elder people's, uh, between men and women in structure of your uh, project team. And it's very important uh, thing, aspect for your uh, future project is to in, is uh, involvement uh, representatives from uh, political, I mean, uh, administrative spheres, from um, uh, among journalists, uh, among public services, and uh, in your case, in our case, I mean, we um, uh, we involved uh, two persons from public sphere public sphere and uh, these two persons um, uh, uh, are from uh, such um, uh, very important uh, spheres as administrative um, and ministerial uh, services in the Republic of Kazakhstan. <laughs> then uh, the, uh, for uh, sustainable um, uh, implementation and sustainable existence of our project. We um, uh, planned, then we uh, opened their uh, the auditorium, Jean Manor European Diplomacy, at the main building of our university. Uh, then uh, all uh, our um, disciplines are conducted in this uh, auditorium. And actually this uh, auditorium became the place of uh, meeting, the place of discussion on uh, var uh, uh, various issues on European integration and diplomacy among students, uh, master students, uh, young uh, teachers, and other uh, interesting um, uh, people interested in uh, issues of European uh, topics. Topics and today, uh, our auditorium is functioning as the uh, place or club for uh, young people, for student, for students. And uh, I want um, uh, to uh, underline another fact that we uh, formed a student club uh, uh, named uh, European Friends. European Friends and this um, club. Uh, uh, holds uh, uh, its uh, meetings in this auditorium. Uh, I think that uh, it's a very important fact, uh, important factor for sustainable uh, existence, sustainable um, outcomes of, uh, of the project. Then uh, uh, it's very important to uh, design, to plan, then uh, to implement such a very uh, principle uh, aspect of your activity as preparation and publication, the uh, uh, methodological um, resources for uh, students and teachers, as well as teach, because um, uh, I think that uh, uh, especially teachers, uh, their uh, lectures of uh, universities uh, need in. Uh, updated information about uh, European diplomacy and integration. And we have prepared um, uh, this textbook, I mean textbook uh, in uh, English, uh, Kazakh and Russian languages uh, named European Diplomacy Theory and Practice for um, both students and uh, teachers of uh, um, universities. And uh, uh, our li library, um, there are, uh, 500 items of these uh, textbooks, and we donated donated uh, some parts of our publications uh, to um, libraries of regional universities of uh, Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. uh, then, uh, uh, in order to disseminate and in order to spread their um, uh, midterm uh, results, results of our um, uh, academic uh, and research activity. Uh, we um, <clears throat> hold annually at the International Distance School the relevant issues of European integration and diplomacy for a wide range of um, uh, teachers, students, and uh, uh, representatives of public services for journalists and uh, Mm. 
uh, now we have announced uh, the uh, International School for uh, 2021 year, uh, then uh, <clears throat> I think that uh, uh, this school, this school is a very uh, crucial part of uh, project implementation because uh, in this case we can involve uh, uh, not only uh, students and uh, teachers, uh, but uh, we can involve uh, all uh, people interested in uh, studying uh, European uh, topics, European matches. Then, <clears throat> uh, the very uh, important uh, activity is uh, their uh, functioning of uh, project website. Website and uh, uh, <clears throat> Uh, in the first year of uh, the uh, project activity, we uh, opened uh, this uh, website of our project and here we can uh, um, see their link uh, and uh, we uh, can visit our uh, site in order to introduce with activity of our project on implementation of uh, main project uh, uh, objectives and goals. goals and uh, uh, there are uh, educational materials, uh, syllabuses, and uh, other informational resources for students and uh, teachers as well. Mm -hmm. Then uh, mm, we uh, must, if you, uh, prepare if you um, uh, are going to uh, apply for a uh, Jean Monnet chair, we may use all opportunities uh, in the framework of your uh, university. And at the, uh, our university, their uh, student conference, their conference of uh, young uh, researchers uh, uh, hold annually and um, we uh, organize their uh, section, the subsection, uh, the problems of European integration diplomacy uh, in the framework of this in the uh, international annual your scientific conference, science and education at our university. And uh, um, I think that this um, uh, section, this opportunity is a very uh, effective option for further implementation of uh, project activity. Then uh, in order to uh, disseminate, in order to um, uh, spread their um, results and ideas of our project implementation, we organize uh, meetings of students with uh, diplomats, politicians, science from European Union countries and institutions. And uh, in this slide, we can um, see their examples of these meetings and uh, uh, this lecture uh, deliver delivered by ambassador of the European Union to the Republic of Kazakhstan, Sven Olaf Karlsson. Then a uh, masterclass of ambassador of the Republic of Austria to the Republic of Kazakhstan, Dr. Uh, Gerhard Seiler. Seiler and uh, students like such meetings and uh, uh, they uh, ask uh, to organize uh, such meetings in the future. And uh, I think that um, the result of uh, such uh, activity, I mean, um, with organization of meetings, uh, with uh, conducting uh, disciplines on European uh, matters and topics, uh, we uh, will influence uh, their situation in our Republic in maybe in nearest future, uh, then um, I uh, think that um, everybody uh, can uh, chance and possibility to apply, uh, then uh, get a grant from the uh, European Union uh, to uh, enhance their abilities, their uh, teaching abilities uh, within their university and within their uh, region and country. Thank you for attention and um, maybe we have questions uh, regarding the um, application and implementation of uh, Ajinmana chair projects. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you very much, uh, Jeannard, for your presentation. It's also interesting to know, to see some pictures uh, during the implementation of the project. Uh, thank you for sharing your experience. Uh, you will stay online and in case of questions, please be prepared for answering them. Okay. Uh, now uh, it will be a floor to Ms. Irina Kurdadze from Tbilisi State University and she's the director of uh, uh, Jean Monnet Chair, Understanding You Policy for Equality. Please, Irina. Uh, dear Janar, could you leave the screen? Could you... Um, okay. uh, just a moment. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm leaving the screen. Oh, just a moment. Mm -hmm. Is it okay? Uh -huh. Yes, yes. Irina, I'm sorry, but we can't hear you, unfortunately. We see the screen, we see your presentation, but no voice. No, not yet. No. And now, can you hear me? Oh, yes, very yeah. good. Very good. <laughs> As usual, Great. it's a yeah. challenge which we have to cope with. First of all, I would like to thank the national offices of Georgia and Armenia for such opportunity to, sorry, share my, my uh, presentation, for such opportunity, even me to share my experience of uh, applying to Jan Monet Chair. Um, from the very beginning, uh, I would like to underline that uh, be prepared that you have to fill in tremendous amount of information in order to be sure that your project is successful. Um, I will try to be short uh, and will focus on the, let's say, tips that can be helpful for the all applicants. From the very beginning, let me introduce my institution because it's also a very important part of the application in order to justify that you have enough capacity for this project. I represent International Law Institute that is scientific research um, unit under the umbrella of faculty of the law. Our institute offers all both programs on BA and MA level and qualification is in international law. You can see here our web um, uh, site and also Facebook addresses that can be maybe useful for you. Uh, related to um, our um, experience that we already gained under the umbrella of institution, the uh, ELE International Law Institute is involved in different academic and specific practical student and not only related activities throughout the years. From public policy development perspective, Institute particularly focus not only on study, but on research issues of international public law and related subjects such as European standards of human rights, or European Convention of Human Rights Law, um, immigration, refugee law, etc. But in uh, recent years, we try to offer as much as possible interdisciplinary approach, not only focusing on legislation and legislative. Uh, also, Institute has very good in-house expertise in different areas of public international law, including European law and 
and union law, focusing on different fields like non-discrimination, women and children's rights, and fighting with domestic violence, et cetera. Besides, Institute has a very close cooperation with different stakeholders, with state agency, with ministries, with uh, Office of Personal Data Inspector, with um, Ombudsman of Georgia, as well as with civil society representatives. Why am I underlying this? Because maybe in some cases you have to justify the capacity of your uh, institution it will be helpful for your uh, project to justify that your institution, your higher education institution has enough capacity to this project. Uh, my project is uh, related to EU policy for equality. In framework of this project, understanding EU policy for equality, chair tried to contribute not only teaching, but also research or better understanding of the European Union, I mean on both level, not only focusing on legal order or legislation, but also on, um, let's say, diversity and values of the European Union. Also special attention the pro and the umbrella of this project paid to the benefits of being EU associate member with particular focus on human dimension on EU-Georgia cooperation. Um, my view, how you have to design, or how you have to write your proposal. From the very beginning, uh, you have to ponder what is the main idea of your project on the preparation stage and be careful, read the full application. It's very important under each part of the application, you will receive information, so-called subtitle, that it's very important part of application. Pay attention on each word you receive from this part of application. This key attention should be paid to this subtitle. I am sharing this, um, let's say experience that I um, received throughout, um, um, throughout my, my, based on my experience, let's say, because it was not the first time when I applied to this Jean chair. Uh, first time, unfortunately, our project uh, was denied and it was told in evaluation report uh, the project did not describe implementation and dissemination, let's say, completely or sufficiently. It was really my mistake not to pay attention on the all requirement under this um, each part of titles. And we, I, I thought that it would be enough to describe only briefly how we plan this implementation and dissemination. From my point of view, it was understandable that we have enough vision how we are planning to do this project. And um, next time, of course, we paid more attention in order to lab. Also, besides of this, it's very important to think when um, drafting your proposal, how evaluator would see your project, your proposal. The award criteria, first of all, are relevance of proposal. It means that project main idea should be in relevance with Jean Monnet action. Another issue is quality of the project design and implementation. Um, maybe very important part of the project is quality of, of project team. And you know that under the umbrella of Jean Monnet chair, you can engage your um, institution, academia uh, member and also pay attention on impact and dissemination. I will try to explain what I mean under each of these criteria. When um, thinking about the relevance, so the important thing is that your idea before you start right should be relevant to the action. And here is some example based on my experience with just and we post 
to deepen teaching and research capacity of institution on specific um, topic related, of course, to European values. Uh, we suggest to elaborate new subject as a program and besides uh, simultaneously, let's say, updating already existing syllabi. After the, uh, after the, after that, it would be um, helpful also to ponder how your overall objective would be formulated, and then think um, throughout which activities or which event you'd like to reach your overall objective. And my advice is only after that formulate specific objectives that should be uh, revealed in your proposal. Uh, while uh, thinking about the project design and implementation, uh, I also, uh, let's say, offer you focus on teaching and accompanying activities because Jean Monnet, yes, of course, Jean Monnet chair is about teaching that research, but it's also very necessary to show that there are additional activities that would be in line with your main overall objective and try to clearly identify all of the project phases like preparation work, what you are planning during this preparation work. For example, the first couple of months you can use as a state of your project. And then, for example, launching new subject on the umbrella of your program. Or oh, be careful also while calculating um, all tangible things that you produce such a number of teaching hours, etc. Um, when describing staff or team members, except holder, of course, um, my view is that it would be very helpful if engagement of uh, not only your colleague, but also young scientists like PhD students, this project. In my case, engagement of international colleague also, I think, was very helpful while evaluating um, project. Because a um, person who is already experienced, the it can be international expert or person who already is a holder of Jean Monnet chair, who has enough expertise in managing such project. Uh, for example, you can ask uh, your colleague to be involved in the peer review process of your syllabi, or you can uh, invite them as a guest lecture during your activities, such as um, workshops or conferences, etc. A very important part of the proposal is target groups that you are planning to reach or cover. You have to explain how these target groups will be reached, throughout which activities and kind of specific objectives is related to cover these target groups. Try to describe or let's say divide all target groups on primary, secondary, and if any additional target group. Of course, it's understandable that under Jean Monnet chair, primary target groups are students and be careful to, let's say, reveal how many students you are planned to cover throughout these three years. In case if you suggest some subjects that would be offered, offered not only to your program students, but let's say to other faculty students, have to also do this in your proposal. Secondary target group can be academia, not only from your institution, but for example, for other high education institutions like regional high education institutions, especially if they are not teaching subjects like are offering on the umbrella of your project. And besides, think who can be 
additional target group that um, can be engaged or involved in activities that you are, uh, you are planning. Uh, in my case, it was um, uh, the project was focusing on professional groups, such as a journalist, uh, and uh, in your case, it can be other target groups like, I don't know, women or minorities or special professional groups. Uh, when writing proposal, pay attention on numbers, please, because it's very important to show how many students e enrolled in this project, how the hours spending teaching uh, other activities. Uh, besides, try to show approximately, of course, how many copies you planning to publish if you have some research or some other informational uh, booklets or leaflets, etc. Um, one uh, part of the application uh, required to uh, describe the quality control mechanism. And uh, it also would be uh, helpful if you could explain how your internal, I mean, institutional or external, if it's on government level, quality control mechanism is working. And if you need during implementation process of your project to use such kind of mechanism. Um, also, I think it's very important to pay attention and to be very clear on the outcomes of your project. For example, there are some, let's say, um, helpful words that can be used during the drafting of the project. In my case, it was increased capacity of some target groups the, or um, increased professionals like better awareness of professional groups, enhanced role of higher education institution itself, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, it depends on the ideas that uh, you would like to propose during, uh, within your uh, project. Um, um, I think it's, uh, I try to be short. I think it's uh, everything I'd like to share on the moment. Flex. If you have any questions, ready to answer. Thank you for your attention. It is uh, my email. If you would like to ask me privately, you can use my email. The first one is uh, my personal email and another one is institution email. Thank you, Irina, very much for your presentation. Uh, we all know that uh, this kind of platform uh, also give us possibility to create, to create the network uh, among experts, among the researchers, among people who are interested. Since yesterday, we have many participants. Yesterday, it was um, about 150. And of course, the second one, Jean Monet, was uh, in the um, uh, earlier section around uh, uh, 80 or 90 or something, 100 even, yeah, 100. Uh, it would be great that um, you can also have connection to, to each other. Unfortunately, we can see all of the participants, only guest speakers, but still, uh, you have time for uh, asking your questions, please, if we have them. Our panelist, Anna Korostyankina, has a question. Please, Anna, proceed with your question. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Irina, for the presentation. Actually, it's not a question, but just a very brief comment, a remark uh, concerning some technicalities of the application. Uh, Irina mentioned uh, the planning of the activities in her presentation, and this reminded me about an important issue that uh, I think uh, uh, it is better not to plan any activities for at least a couple of months uh, from the beginning of the eligibility period. Like for example, if it started in September, then September, October, it's better not to plan any activities because there may be delays with the signing of your grant agreement. And uh, your project officially starts only when the grant agreement is signed. 
And uh, if you organize anything before a grant agreement is signed by both parties, um, these events, they're just not eligible. They're not considered at, as within your project. So for the first year of implementation, I would suggest not planning any activities for at least a couple of months at the beginning. Um, because uh, the number of projects uh, is growing from year to year and of course the workload for the agency is huge. There may be uh, technical delays with uh, preparing the agreements and then signing them. So just, just a recommendation not to plan for a, first, a couple of first months at the beginning of the eligibility period. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I would like to add some comments to the Kyoto. In our case, we use the first mass of our project in order to elaborate and to update our existing syllabi. Maybe it would be helpful for someone. And uh, the issue was that uh, even if we do not receive, we were planning to suggest such subject to our, uh, our students. So it depends, of course. It's Thank you so much. We all know that uh, and we listened from our uh, speakers. Idea is first, of course, and I think that uh, in our audience that's already have some ideas. And um, you should know that uh, before, um, uh, in earlier time, Jean Monnet had the list of prioritized uh, areas low economics, etc., etc. But now it will be open as already earlier already mentioned by Anna and uh, Christina that natural sciences, social sciences, of course, people, for, exa for example, for our uh, agrarian sphere or, or civil engineering, um, other, other profiles and fields and could think about the, how to uh, make possible uh, to uh, design the modules who will uh, touch EU um, integration matters, how they it was dealt uh, in this year in the European Union. It will be very interesting uh, experience and to make this research. So please, uh, those who come from the cultural sphere, for example, from the institutions of um, cinematography, theater, of, of fine arts uh, uh, conservatory as well, probably they, they will also just think about the interesting ideas. It could be um, interdisciplinary, of course. So thank you. No questions or? We have something interesting to listen. No questions at the moment. Okay. Well, uh, we already uh, um, got some experience um, sharing by our colleagues on the module preparation, on how to apply to the chair. And uh, the last one, it will be experience from how to create the the Center of Excellence. And Ms. Uh, Aksana Halovka Havishova, head of the Jean Monnet Chair of Excellence from Ivan Franco National University of Lvov, Lviv, Ukraine. Please, the floor is yours, Aksana. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. That was, that's perfectly, that was the last thing I was worried about. So uh, thank you very much for the introduction. I'm going to share my screen as usual practices and we'll talk a little bit about my experiences I have here in Ukraine um, uh, leading the, the Jean Monnet Center of Excellence. Just a moment. So here it is. Nice picture of my university and as well um, of the program as, as, as it is usually um, in, in such uh, events. Our uh, Jean Monnet Center of Excellence is really a new institution at the Ivan Franco National University of Lille. We are found in um, 2019. Our project started in 2018. And we, uh, we actually our multidisciplinary research center, which aims actually to serve as a 
regional hub, hub for research and teaching activities. So the discussion on the interconnection between research and teaching is very important. And in any project, including Modox, this is my uh, opinion and experience. I have, we have at the Iran Franco National University of Louisville shows that the uh, research component has to be present. I will refer briefly also to the previous experiences we had at the Iran Franco National Universities uh, after I present our center a little bit. So um, we have here the component and components engaged. It is the, the research search the teaching and uh, we have a particular focus of course we uh, we identified ourselves as a center for evidence-based public policy making and training uh, experts in this field so our activities uh, are directed we're offering to the public sector to training public officials on how to develop your Ukrainian policies aligned to the European Union requirements. And then we actually work very, uh, in, in the recent time also very often as a hub for communication and sharing experiences uh, in teaching in European studies. And um, we, we actually try to foster the international cooperation in this uh, in the in the, the area of european studies so uh, so what what we are the history of jean monet activities at the university you see is quite very extensive one currently uh, until today we have we had four jean monet projects um three of them are modules and um, Jean Monnet Center of Excellence, as you see on the logo. And then we have a network project, which is coordinated by the colleague of mine, Roman Kalichak. Um, also, uh, he is, by the way, the senior research fellow at the Jean Monnet Center of Excellence he, at, at, at Lviv University in, in Ukraine. I mean, the, the general cover, coordination is done in Turkey. So uh, we started, our history is very, very interesting because um, uh, both Roman and me, we've got at the same year the financing from the European Union for our uh, project ideas. In my case, it, these were the, the summer schools in European studies. In his case, it was the course, special course developed on subnational dimensions. So very specialized course for students who actually specialize in international relations and international, international um, economic relations to deal with a subnational dimension with the European Union with the uh, what the um, issues of regionalism. So these were two projects actually financed, financed in the same project here. This is like to encourage also people a little bit to apply uh, from different from, from, for, the, uh, for people from one university to apply together for the funding, not together, but in, but I mean in, in separate in separate projects. So um, this is a uh, not rare exemption, and we have in Ukraine a couple of other experiences. So for example, the Polytechnical University had also received uh, funding for several Jean Monnet modules at the same time. Therefore, the quality of the idea is very important. The very first thing you do, this is your idea, and you have to explain the brilliance you have so that people understand and also the feasibility, the, the correlation between the idea, the activities you plan and the results you are going to achieve with your project. If you do this logical line, it will work also, even though your colleagues in university will also be able and are able to apply in the same round. So I, th I think this is an important um, focal point to make that uh, really the project idea is very important. And the, the, currently we had also this very special, the very first two projects at the university. And then we had another type of module in 2016 
on economics in European integration, and you see there is a totally different type of uh, the activities financed here because it was a general course on economics, and which has been modernized so, so introducing the relevant European Union aspects. So this is also possible, and you see here the experiences of our of, of my university are showing that this is a particular uh, actually any any possible any any focus is possible that the, uh, really the, the quality of the, the the application itself and the activities itself proves and uh, actually the ex excellence of the application and leads then to the financing. Currently, the last project we have at the university, um, it is a Jean Monnet module dealing with particular issue. So this is the pro, um, project focusing on uh, revitalization of cities. And this is a special topic to which is uh, addressed also by a colleague of mine and um, Olga Sitch, who is a coordinator of this project and uh, runs it within. And as, as already mentioned, since 2018, we, are we, are, we, we do have the, um, our center of excellence. Just to see what we, what we do, um, this is, um, these are actually our main activities. The biggest part of our, um, of our agenda relates to the research in law, political sciences and economics. So we are interdisciplinary research center trying to focus our research and to link the academic profiles of our team um, to specific issues. Which we which we research and to research those issues from legal perspective, political and economical perspectives. For example, my particular field of, of research is consumer protection. So we are doing as a team an analysis how to adjust Ukrainian legislation on consumer protection to the European Union legislation. But however, we address also as well political implications of this process. For example if uh, who is going to vote to support this uh, amendments of the legislation who is going to vote against the legislation so to do the political research beyond that and then the economic research so which for example how this legislature have these changes we are going to or ukraine is obliged to introduce which economic impact do they have in the country on, on stakeholders, namely businesses and consumers. So this is how we are trying to work. We have educational programs. Um, it was a question whether uh, du during the previous sessions, it was a question how to uh, make the winter schools sustainable. So you see here an example of our Jean Monnet Center of Excellence, the winter schools in European studies became uh, also a part of our educational agenda. We, I, I started the project on, uh, on summer schools in European studies in 2014, and now we are continuing it, uh, it again within the program of our Jean Monnet Center. Um, and we actually uh, advise uh, um, very often uh, our government and stakeholders on different policy making issues. So especially in those uh, fields which, which, uh, which go aligned with the expertise of the center. Um, so just to, to have the imagination of our uh, research agenda, current research agenda, we focus actually on the EU legal system and the implementation issues. I explained already my topic on consumer protection a little bit. We have also the research on EU common policies, especially EU educational policy. We have uh, uh, under the loop the uh, pension systems in the European Union. So it is a really very particular research topic. And we address also the European studies as such, uh, as, as uh, uh, just to see how the European studies are taught and researched in the 
um, on the EAP area and in Ukraine. Um, so we are not limited to, to those topics, of course, of course uh, not. Uh, but we stick to them as a main research agenda, and uh, we develop our expertise here uh, on those issues. Um, we are actually a teamwork. So Jean Center of Excellence is not working without um, very fruitful collaboration with my colleagues who are dealing with different aspects and with different topics. For example, here um, highlighted Oksana Krajewska. She addresses the issue of EU educational policies and provides expertise in this field, um, including the EU educational policy. Roman Kalichak addresses the issue of European studies and researchers that how they are done in Ukraine and in the uh, in the post-Soviet area. Um, Mikhailo Mikievich is addressing also the legal issues, the development of the legal system of Ukraine aligned to the EU standards. And Vasil Delenko here the, in the in the in the bottom uh, is addressing the economical aspects of the um, um, European integration as, as a main focus and also the pension systems. So here is, he focuses on the research of the pension systems in the EU and in Ukraine. So through our activities, what we what we do actually, you can see you can see on the next slide. We have as a main as I mean, outputs or outputs of the, the um, project, we have winter schools, we have uh, capacity buildings for public servants, and we conducted numerous of them, and we have academic workshops where, where we discuss um, really foc focal points um, of, of our interests, like the the either of these are the European studies as it was done in Kiev a couple of years ago, or here we addressed the uh, in in Chisinau, we were addressing the issues of um, the European Union common policies. Um, our uh, our um, most important part of our. Um, of, of our work is also the uh, work with uh, stakeholders. You see here the institutions we are trying to develop for the proper cooperation. And here the very first and the front runner is of course the National Erasmus Plus Office. And I would encourage all the applicants as well to contact your National Erasmus Plus Office with the center uh, with your questions, even at the stage of the application, because uh, this is uh, really a pool of experts dealing with and, and giving proper advice to you on, on certain issues. In my case, in Ukraine, it is really the institution which is very helpful. And I uh, and we are trying to establish and support also the the activities of the National Erasmus Plus Office in Ukraine, um, as well sharing our experiences in in managing um, in managing projects, especially Jean Monnet projects. Um, we work with the state bodies here. It is uh, the um, uh, presented the uh, vice uh, with the vice premier minister of Ukraine, uh, um, Stefanishina, giving a lecture for our students on the EU-Ukraine relations. So we try also to uh, to focus upon these issues uh, uh, very often and to invite the professionals from governments to talk to students, which is very important, but also we are sharing our experiences and our expertise with Ukrainian ministries. A part of our team has experiences of advising the Ministry of Economy, Ministry of Education and Science of Ukraine, the Ministry of Justice on Ukraine on the approximation issues, and we are continuing our work so far. A part of our research activities is uh, devoted also to these issues because we uh, are um, planning to produce policy papers for the government, how to approximate 
Ukrainian um, Ukrainian legislation to the EU requirements so in, in pension issues, in consumer protection issues, in educational fields. So this is this is very important. Um, as as very important part of our cooperation with stakeholders, um, I see also the cooperation with the national NGOs and international NGOs, who specialize on um, on European studies. So here in Ukraine, we have two institutions. This is the Ukrainian Association of European Studies and uh, Ukrainian Association of uh, Researchers and Professionals in European Integration, which are very important for us as a good um, for, for us to disseminate our activities. They are very important and I would, um, we, we, we cooperated also as Anna Hvorostankina mentioned, we cooperated also with the Association of European Studies for the Caucasus and this is also a very important instrument to be to be used uh, up to my opinion especially in the dissemination phase phase when you are planning your activities where and how to spread the information and of course we cooperate with other Jean projects here there are a couple of projects presented from Moldova also the Jean Monnet Center of Excellence in Ushkorod is our cooperation partner very often so the national network of Jean-Mine modules and national cooperation is also very important because this is also the network where you can get necessary expertise for your projects. And for example, it is very helpful in the cases when you know um, you're going to start the project, but you don't have enough uh, qualification, academic qualification to start the project in a separate issue. So the national framework um, of experts and the module coordinators can help you very much in supporting your application, for example, while involving uh, members of, of running Jean Monnet modules to your activities or to Jean Monnet chairs, so that the synergy between projects is, uh, is um, envisaged. Um, this is uh, so far here. I've, I've summed up a couple of uh, writing tips because you've seen today different experiences and I just um, summed up maybe what was missed. So I actually would make a point that any application, whatever it starts, it has to be smart. The smart principle has to be followed and the logical structure in your project has to be present. So um, this, is, this is a very important part. The teamwork is important. So even though the project you can apply solely as an applicant, but you think about the project's realization and bear in mind that it will be always a teamwork. A team at least between you as a model leader and the university staff who will be engage into the project uh, realization, especially on the university staff from the international relations offices, bookkeeping offices, and so on. This is very important, so don't consider the uh, Jean Monnet project being really individual project to support you individually. These projects are supporting the institutions, and they are supporting your, your, your university pretty much so think about that um, the next point is uh, before you start and if you're new just try to register the tenders and participants portal of the european union this is a very important feature you will try you will have to download all the application and you will have to learn how to use those tools please uh, do it a little bit in advance because if you do it later on so the technical issues can become very crucial. Um, I made, I will also make a point which was already mentioned, but the correlation between the activities and the budget needs to be clearly observed. So if you have a very huge team, if you have a very big aim of the project, but very small budget for it, usually it is not feasible that you will achieve the results. Please pay attention to the, 
to the to those to those issues. I also encourage you to work with your university before you apply. Just talk to the university staff uh, responsible for the international cooperation project management because you will, at the end of the day, you will end up identifying this 25 or 20% 20 of the co-financing of the university. So just go ahead and think about those practices which are relevant for your university and seeing that this, uh, this co-financing is, uh, is issue is very important. It is maybe not that much important for modules and chairs, but for the Center of Excellences, which is based on a real cost budget, this is a point of consideration and um, before planning and uh, deciding the budget, just think what will be the university part in it a little bit ahead. So uh, there is a difference, as, as I uh, mentioned before, between the lump sum budgets and real expenses budgets, take it into account. And again, um, very important part is the description of your university. So you, you are always limited in the application form to the uh, with, with symbols you, you are exposed to use. The description, this is the description of your university, the proper profile of your university is very important to highlight the expertise and the ability of the institution to, um, to support uh, the research to perform the project. So take it in mind and please pay attention that the websites of your university, international relations offices and so on, actually contain the relevant uh, information which is important for your project and contain also the information about the European projects which are performed by the university. This is a very important part, I think, and um, helps pretty much. This is like from my side to, to share with you and um, I, I always say that the writing application is also about the realization in the future. Once you write your application, think carefully also how are you going to implement it in the reality and which obstacles and risks may appear on this way. So um, this is so far from my side. Thank you very much for the attention. I am really very open to questions. Um, that you have. We have a question for our, from our panelist, Kristina Gevorkian. Kristina, please go ahead. Yes. Sorry, do you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. Thank you very much, Aksana, for your presentation. It was very interesting uh, for us as well because we are, for already second year, we are planning to apply for the uh, Center for Excellence, but we are just trying to figure out in which context and in which format we should apply. I would like to ask uh, one or two very short questions. First of all, as I understood your uh, teaching uh, part mainly covered uh, winter schools and some certificate programs, right? Yes. Uh, did you also have any trainings for civil servants? Yes, so the capacity building for civil train, uh, for civil uh, servants, and they are uh, focused upon three very precise issues. This is evidence-based public policy making, uh, real impact assessment, and legal drafting. So just to cover the needs of the uh, public sector of Ukraine in the, on those issues, because these are interconnected aspects and they go together. Uh, the courses are, they are really very uh, practically oriented. So this is very, very it was very interesting to uh, listen. And the secondly, uh, regarding uh, maybe uh, the budget part, uh, did you agree everything with your uh, uh, financial department? Or because I know that in case of uh, Center for Excellence, it's a bit different. Actually, in advance, that's what I meant when I, I said that just discuss it a little bit in advance. Yes, before submitting the application, we visited our, we have at the university the planning uh, mm -hmm. department. 
and we visited the planning department and had uh, have had negotiations and discussions on on how the, the the university contribution can look like in our case uh -huh. so i advise it to to do so because the university knows what is possible what is not possible and also to look a little bit ahead not to guidance on budgeting but also to guidance on the reporting okay so this will help you on financial reporting because jean monet center of excellences they are subject subjects to audits yeah i know yeah and so this is, this is the point so we did uh, uh, we go we went actually a step further we went to the auditing uh, requirements as well and made um and have got information about that and then discussed it with the university exactly so what is this is very important with this very i know that because it's difficult and it's more like uh, the budgeting of the network because i had this experience of doing some uh, sending out information regarding the networks with the budget and the last uh, very uh, i just wanted to ask a question but it's just i guess uh, skipped my mind uh, yeah uh, if i'm not mistaken the audited cost auditing costs are also included in the budget it's a yes. compulsory part of the budget in the previous form, yes, they are included, but here I just went through the new guidelines and the suggested breakout for the budget lines is a totally different now. They mm -hmm. are something to do through the work packages. Mm -hmm. in Previous budget in the budget which I am actually uh, familiar with and I'm working with, we have the budget hearings like more more traditional, like staff costs, mobility mm -hmm. costs supplies and so on and so on so the, the reason my advice here is just to look for the application forms yeah. to see exactly how the budget has to be constructed thank you very much thank you very much for your responses yeah thank you so much for presentation and uh, to your contribution uh, do we have uh, questions so far Maybe we have a question uh, in yes. the chat. Uh, a moment, please. Uh, oh, no, that's not a question, but thanks uh, to the NEO and to the speakers and coordinators of the event. Yeah, and maybe one very short, brief comment. We've got our Jean Monnet Center of Excellence Finance from the very first application. So we submitted that for the one time and in the same year it was approved. That's why I am actually paying the attention to the composition and the correlation between all the components. Okay. I think uh, in our case, the very important part was that we were really the multidisciplinary team. Mm -hmm. He showed also the potential for uh, development of our professional expertise. So in uh, the research part we have here, it is very ex extensive one. So we are uh, obliged to, by the end of the project, to present our monographs and policy papers and academic articles, each mm -hmm. team. So currently we manage, so for example, now three of us have already published internationally. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a very important part. So if you plan um, the Jean Monnet Center of Excellence, just pay attention to the research and underline the importance of the research. Pretty yeah. much. I, this, this is my idea. Um, for Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the tips. Yeah. Dear colleagues, uh, thank you to all guest speakers. Uh, for having such a want to just nice to interrupt, we have one more question. Okay, uh, can go ahead. the Jean Monet module be submitted for a PhD program? Yes. Jean Monet module. Uh, can we get clarification what is meant by uh, Jean submitted for PhD program? It you can use Jean Monet module as a tool to, for organizing spe uh, special, uh, uh, let's say, um, 
courses or modules for PhD students. You can target specifically PhD students and organize, for example, uh, courses on research, on uh, data collection, on uh, how to use um, uh, the sources, how to cite or whatever, I, how to do methodology, how to work. I mean, like this can also be used uh, in that case, in that sense, we, you can use Jean Monnet. Because, for example, in case of our network, when we speak about the TaskNet network, and I was very uh, pleased to see that AESC and our, uh, there was a co co cooperation between um, uh, Oksana's uh, organization and our uh, co and our association. So when we were doing this, our desk net, we had uh, several summer schools and there were also uh, winter schools, but there were special courses that were designed specifically for PhD students or for people who were already going towards the uh, PhD state, they were just studying or master's level students or PhD students to help them with, uh, with doing research, with planning research, for example, in political science, how you can do in legal science, how you can do, because there can be some diff interesting uh, courses can be uh, thought of and presented. If colleagues can add. Yeah, I, th I think also that the PhD students can be easily the beneficiaries of such, uh, of such, uh, and such module and i think it will it 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 was even even it was very beneficial in the previous years to show the um, the impact for new generation of scientists so if you were aiming to develop the skills of the phd students that was also a part which was beneficial for the module as, as such mm -hmm. I mean, the modules, usually, both in the modules in the center of excellence, you have different target groups. Do not forget about that. So it can be the main one, but the other target groups are not to be omitted. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah, yeah. OK. Thank you again. And please, those who uh, haven't uh, sent us uh, your presentations, please send uh, and we put that uh, together with recording uh, on, the, um, on the YouTube, on our website, on the Facebook, uh, whatever, as soon as possible, because we really want to be quick and to give the, the whole information to our, our audience. Uh, I think that uh, this is our last minute and uh, uh, just to conclude our two days of meeting uh, with the um, many presentations and uh, of course we expect many, many questions, but still people will decide how they will apply as soon as that application is not there. Uh, and I would say that by the end of April, uh, together with colleagues uh, of Eastern Partnership, um, we, um, we will organize this regional event on um, Erasmus Mundus action. Uh, since yesterday, we discussed that, and uh, now we just in the correspondence right now and before, and it will be uh, much more clear next week how it will be, um, you know, organized. Uh, but I think that the places will be limited, and we will. Um, our my Georgian colleagues, uh, Moldovan, Ukrainian, Belarus, Azerbaijan uh, colleagues, they will inform uh, the academic community when it will be and how many places we could afford. So, thank you again. Thank you so much and good luck to all of you with uh, the new face of Erasmus Plus 2021-2027. Uh, it will another possibility, another opportunity to all of us to be involved in, uh, in the projects, to create the idea and implement our plans for, uh, at our institutions and for our institution for the new generation for our students good luck and see you hopefully soon thank you again to all see you 
Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, Anna. Thank you, Edith. Thank you, Annie, for organizing. Bye. Bye, bye. bye. Follow us through the Facebook page and see the whole the presentations and all the pictures on our website and not only. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you to a very, very nice, very professional work of Zara Soromonian, who was our interpreter of these two days. Zara, can we see you? Zara? Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bravo and good luck to all of you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Stay well. Stay healthy.